Welcome to Shardcast, the Brandis Anderson podcast. We're a bunch of mega fans giving you the news discussion and, of course, a whole lot of opinions about Brandon's work and the Cosmere. I'm Eric, and joining me is Matt. Hi, I'm Comatose on the forums. Yeah, and also joining us is Evgeny. Hi, I am cold and also argent. Oh, you're cold. That's a, that's a- <laughs> I thought you said you're called. Oh, <laughs> I was just like super confused. Like, it's like, yeah, yeah. That's 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 why I have a blanket on. You are, you're you're cosplaying as the Lord Ruler as a Pac Man, you know, just with the fur coat. Yeah. Well. Well. So. So. What. What. I. What I was gonna do is I was. I was gonna do kind of this this head wrap type of thing oh, and be like, oh, uh, like oh, that. And, it looked much more and, like. Mary, mother of Jesus, to me. But. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you know, same thing. <laughs> but but I was but I was gonna spin this into like being an old person, and because we're gonna talk about like old fandom things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I wasn't I wasn't feeling it. So. Oh, okay. Cool. Good talk. <laughs> also joining us is David. I'm Windrunner in the forums, and my intro got all stepped over by Argent. <laughs> wow, how rude! And I'm Chaos. So today we are going to go back through old things old crazy theories that we had long ago and we're going to laugh at them so you know sometimes we say some real dumb things sometimes there's some gems but sometimes we're real dumb and it's real fun to laugh at us so i kind of want to start with talking about some history of the fandom because (laughs) Matt and I, we joined like within a week of each other on the forums before 17th Shard. Before Classical 17th Shard. No, 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 no. <laughs> it was called Time Wasters Guide, which was basically a site that Brandon and his friends made to just hang out after they graduated BYU. And they had different author sections. And then uh, Brandon got big. And so, yeah, there was a lot of Brandon fans, a lot of them. Uh, as things progressed and they eventually shut down the site and uh 17 shard became the forums uh 17 shard opened in 2010 we're nearing our 10 year anniversary we're gonna do something fun probably uh for that but then we actually were his forums uh 2011 and on so this is some deep lore here where matt and i we went through some real old things from (laughs) the old forums yeah which you can still all read you can yeah you can read all these the uh, archive is available on the uh if you scroll down on the 17 shard uh forum page yeah 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 yeah. you can go to the twg archive and then we all we arjun's been in the fandom real long time too i i have been reading the books real long time um i've i've done several sessions of like investigating trying to figure out when exactly i i started reading these things because (laughs) originally i hated brandon's guts like i came into i came into this community as a robert jordan fan ah right and then oh it it there there came the announcement that this this young guy whom by the way i had fancied myself quite the connoisseur of fantasy so like i knew all the big names and so this guy that i hadn't even heard of was going to be finishing the Great Wheel of Time series. I was like, screw this guy. And for I want to say like half a year, maybe two year, I don't I don't remember the exact timelines, but like I just refused to even think about Brandon. I was like, I'm on this is a problem. Brandon Sanderson is a problem for the future. Uh and then the next Wheel of Time book was about to come out and I decided to see what's going on. And I think I just devoured everything in like a couple of months or whatever. So back it's turned in, out to be pretty good. <laughs> mid mid two thousand and nine is is when I came into the picture. Nice, David. What about you? When did you when did you come in? I was I, I think I picked up Way of Kings first, probably like three or four months after it came out in twenty ten, like almost almost twenty eleven. Uh, 
and read it then and like lurked on 17th shard and storm blessed if anybody remembers that yeah that existed no, this, for a little this time. is deep deep lore yeah here. that's where i actually originated because i was oh freaking wow big. yeah yeah no well see i love stormlight and i would like read about warbreaker you and mean Mistborn online you chose the handle windrunner because you really liked way of kings it, it's weird how that worked <laughs> out but, when, uh, back when Windrunner was like, oh wow, what a what an original name that I can call yeah. myself. <laughs> yeah, well, did, it was like my first the first time I joined anything. I was like sixteen, so I was like, what am I gonna call myself? There's a there like there's a couple great posts where I clearly didn't understand where how forums work, and I'm like asking for Skyrim help on Seventeen Shard, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> you didn't know what you were doing. But I lurked for a couple months on Seventeen Shard after I found a Seventeen Shard interview on storm blessed and came over and eventually started like quietly <laughs> found the posting. One. <laughs> yeah well that's when i was like but i was i was convinced like you guys were asking me all this stuff and i'm like oh this mistborn and this warbreaker are in the same universe what if they're not the same quality i've never read anything like this what if they're not the same quality as this book but i i deigned to lower myself to read them and loved them and have been a fan ever since what what, what about you matt tell, tell me tell me how you you got into things um so i found elantris on the new release <laughs> stack in my local bookstore and picked it up and read it and instantly became obsessed um all of my video game characters for like a year had white hair after that <laughs> um and i actually considered bleaching my own hair white because wow. i was that, i was yes. that obsessed with elantris i had never read anything like you it you need to get obsessed. a white wig and do that on shardcast yeah, matt yeah. you have to you have to you're actualize legally that dream yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um so i for the elantris actualize sequel. your you should actualize your aeon <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's some deep lore right there yeah so I had no one to talk to about it. So it drove me to like, I'd also never been a part of like an online fandom before. Um, in 2007, I think I joined the site, the TWG the first time, cause I Googled Brandon Sanderson and found it. Um, I then was like, Oh, I'm on too many forums. Cause I kind of went forum crazy and deleted my account. Um, and then came back again in 2008 around the time of Eric, uh, to discuss heroes of ages because, or it was, coming out soon the pre-hero of ages uh, time that was fun yeah and uh yeah i don't know i was no i was like 14 15 16 i think in those so also a teenager we were and a lot younger reading my, my posts like wow i'm really annoying here like i thought yeah, yes <laughs> oh i was i was the worst <laughs> yeah our, our argent i are uh, Evgeny, I remember uh, when you were saying how you came in kind of anti-Brandon. I'm like, you know what? Your early theories, I remember being really angry and like oppositional. So like that kind of makes sense <laughs> that, like, <laughs> that you're coming from a place of like, screw that guy. And then like, <laughs> well, no, so, so by, by the time I joined yeah. the community, I was already yeah. deep in. Okay, yeah. But, yeah, I like how that's um, the impression that you, you like. not like in a not in like a bad way, but I just remember you know, like you stated your opinions just in a not in really a bad strong. way. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Um, no, that's that's just a character flaw that I had and still haven't gotten rid of. Yeah. We're well. Mine was kit flaw. I uh, had a lot of theories that were like, "What about this?" and not really like expanding on it, just like noticing random yeah. things and being like. What about that? Um, I was also known for not spelling well. Um, oh, I yeah. Like Holy typos. crap. Your spelling was terrible yeah. for like three <laughs> years, point, dude. <laughs> there, was a, there was a thread. One of my first threads was on how I like Settlers of Catan, the expansion Cities and Knights. And one of the, I think St. Allure's, like one of the big TWG guys oh, yeah, was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I love that you spelled Cities and Knights three, knights three different ways in that post, none of which were correct. <laughs> This is like like post way of kings where people could not spell Teravangian worth their life and we just yeah, called him Mr. T because we're just like, <laughs> yeah. screw this. I can't even yeah. be bothered to spell this guy's name correctly. Yeah. Now I think we figured it out. I thought yeah. it was Teravan again for a very long time. Hanavana Vanavar? That's it. <laughs> uh, no, that's the, that's the, the prince in Yakovid. No, that's the king of Yakovid. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah, whatever. yeah. Yeah. I read Elantris. Uh, it, uh, I picked it up in a random airport bookstore because I really liked the the cover and the 
back of it seemed really cool with the multiple viewpoints. I'm like, that sounds cool. I devoured that book on the plane. And then like it was the paperback. And so the, I was really excited to see what more was going on in the Elantris world. And then there was there was a preview for Mistborn. I'm like, this is different. I don't like it. And so like for about a year after that, I literally was like, I hate this. And I didn't even I didn't read it. And then later I'm like, you know, I did really like that Brandon Sanderson book. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go and buy Mistborn paperback, the old Mistborn paperback cover in 2007. Yeah, deep. Uh, where Vin looked very strange. Uh, and the hardback of no, 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 no. It was the paperback of that. I don't even know what that looked like. Like I have no idea what that cover was. Uh, is, it this, is it the same cover? No, no, no. It's a slightly okay. different cover. Huh. We, it's it's funny because just on the copper mine, we've been finding old covers, so we we did find it. But uh, maybe 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 we'll show that off real quick. Uh, but. Then I, I picked up that and the Well of Ascension hardback, and I'm like, oh, I'm in deep now. Mistborn's really great. <laughs> and then I, I, I wanted to talk about uh, things on Time Wasters Guide, and I realized that I was quite controlling of discussion and things. Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would have thought me being a control freak or anything? That's, that's very out of character for me. <laughs> right, guys? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Shocker. It's interesting hearing that reaction, because... Elantris, I was remember being like, oh my gosh, it's a standalone. I don't need to read an entire series was part of why I picked it up because as well. I'm just used to sequels. Um, I was just like then, always used to sequels, right? Yeah. And then you get to the end of Elantris and I'm like, oh my gosh, now I want a sequel. Like, I know. <laughs> I know. I know. I we need one, but I want one. Four, 14 years later, we're, we're still getting, waiting, we're waiting for the Elantris. <laughs> it's, it's still been standing alone real well. But, yeah, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I realized. Good call, Brandon. <laughs> yeah. That uh some some of the things that nowadays uh, i read 17 charts like oh i did these things a while ago oh that's not good so we we've learned a lot about ourselves we're we're gonna make fun of ourselves it is you are going to really enjoy the nonsense that we're gonna have so i think uh matt and i are gonna dominate the conversation a little bit but you two are gonna (laughs) laugh with us oh about some pre-hero of ages stuff because that I don't know about you, Matt. That, that's still like to me, like some of the golden age of theorizing where we really had no idea what was going on. We had no idea what the Cosmere was. We didn't know anything because we learned about that after Hero of Ages where Brandon was just like dropping bombs. It's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the three realms and stuff. And even Peter was surprised that like Dragonsteel yeah. and Mistborn was in the same universe. Did you know that Elantris and Mistborn were the same no, universe? Then? No, we okay. didn't even know who Hoyd was. OK, like, yeah, it, that's cool. it, yeah. Until um yeah, Brandon did a QA after Hero of Ages came out. Mm-hmm. And that's when he first dropped the everything's in the same universe. Yeah, and, we, and the other four shards that we've seen and I'm like, yeah, shards. And then it's like, yeah, yeah now I'm here. So <laughs> easy. So <laughs> well, like we really had like, no clue. Like, yeah. I can't believe this is like people finding like, oh, why is ruin and preservation capitalized when Tensoon is talking about them? I, and like, there's stuff about that, and figuring out, oh, these are like proper nouns. I, They're I referring called, to something. I called ruin the ruin entity for a while until Peter's just like, it's just ruin. Just stop, <laughs> you, you can stop doing that. I was like, oh right, yeah, cool. I'll do that. <laughs> so there's there's some there's some really good stuff. He, here's one I like. Now here's the time for radical theories. I'm under the impression that if Ruin has some sort of external mechanism to exist in, like the mist, then preservation should have something similar. I think then, with very little evidence to support this, that the ash mounts and ash itself is preservation. Somehow. <laughs> Quality. <laughs> so you I so you were like oh, go uh you were like miss our ruin at that point then. Well, at that time, I, I think like mm-hmm. that that's like some one of the earlier things like it, yeah. throughout yeah, that, that year, sense. we learned a lot of things. It's like, yeah, the, the mists are killing things. I don't know. Yeah, mm-hmm. there was a lot of back and forth on what the mists were and the deepness and mm-hmm. if it was ruin or preservation or both. And also the ash mounts, because those are the other big set piece of mist. Yeah, it didn't matter. The ash falling it from didn't the sky. matter at all. Yeah, so we were like, oh, like if the mists are so significant, 
and there's all this like duality and you know so if the mists are on one side the ash mounts were the obvious yeah, the other side of that. Here's this great quote. Well, I don't think Brandon would put in the ash mounts and give them names if they weren't important in some ways. <laughs> <laughs> that was the thing I said. It's just like, oh yeah, that that did not matter. Ah, uh, we did not throw the ring into Mount Tyrion or anything in the end. So, <laughs> unfortunately, what do you got, Matt? My first uh, post back when I rejoined was what? identifying that in the logbook entries, Lindy states that Rayshek. Uh, or thinks he wears the piercings of the hero unjustly, um, which was a big discovery. A lot of people were like, oh, Elendi had piercings. And then later on, someone was like, oh, like, so like there was a hemallergic influence. Um, and they start talking about, is he an inquisitor? And that got my back up because I was like, oh, no, he doesn't have eye spikes. Like he's describing like the scenery and stuff. Right. And then that led to me being like, you know what? I, I think it's just the piercings of the hero. I think it's like a sign. I don't think it's like hemallergic at all, though. Like, you know, so like great, great find. But yeah, no. And it was no, hemallergic no because hemallergy. that's how he sensed yeah. the well. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's that so, good. The kind of big topics that were being discussed at the time. And mm -hmm. a lot of this stuff came up again and again. So there was a lot of threads on hemallergy, how it worked. Oh, there was a comprehensive there was a thread on hemallergy that I actually made. Thread. And was like, we should have a, a yeah. thread on this. <laughs> That's um, the crap I pulled. Another big thread was why Vin is so powerful. There was a lot of different theories about what was special about Vin. Um, who's the hero, age, a hero of ages was related to that. But that was another big big subject of discussion um and then You're some other the right tree with all of those those are all really important we totally to nailed yeah. vin's earring being super important so when that happened we were yeah. like yes we're totally right and that was totally justified did you, how, then, did you oh, how did you know about the word hemallergy did, pre, did they tell it you it was that? in the annotations we oh. had the we had Mistborn one and two's annotations. I, well, and that, I didn't know when they came out. Relative. Oh yeah, no, no, so, no. Yeah, yeah, we had the annotations, and so like Brandon was like talking about like, well, the Lord Ruler only touched one of these two powers here, and mm. and we're just like going off on that and like this rune of preservation. So I'm like, well, what does that mean? How did he the touch? The annotations just, were huge. And yeah. oh yeah, that was the source of a lot of theorizing that we don't get these days. Uh, if you yeah. if you haven't read the annotations, there's some great lore there where Brandon is just like. Yeah, this is some background that you never would get in the books, but here, here you go. Yeah, yeah, I I miss those so much. Yeah, but we yeah. also want him to write books, which is sad. Yeah. Brandon needs to. What he needs to do is get a good, like he has a lot. He has like a company now working for him. What I think he needs to do is get start dictating, and just as he writes, like dictate stuff, and then get one of his like get an assistant or someone to like just write well, down his the, my understanding is he would write the annotations as he was doing the copy edit but now he yeah. has peter to do that so he he, he literally doesn't do the copy edit so he doesn't yeah. do that pass so yeah like mm. he, he doesn't have a chance to so that that's yeah. that's why it doesn't happen but yeah. the annotations are really cool we went off on lots of tangents and he he talks about those three magics and he mentions the word heme allergy so we we did get that word then okay uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we're like, what is hemallergy? And I was dead convinced hemallergy was not merely just stealing things. I, and I was like, I don't know how the Condor and Kolos fit in this. But we did discover that they had spikes. It's like, okay, there's something there, but I don't know how this works. And I was like, well, you know, instead of allomancy, where like you're enhancing the body with the mists, Hemallergy is you're using the, you're like burning the body to like do other things and we're and like in I I had this big lightning rod hemallergy thing it to it I I tried to read it I don't know what I was talking about to be to be honest I I've learned I've learned this from experience that really complicated theories that are really long probably aren't right so like. I, I am sorry if you listen to this podcast and you do that. And I that's great because I don't have it in me anymore to write long theories. But like when when you invent lots of new things, I'm just like, this is too complicated. The Brandon answers are usually a bit simpler and that are like, oh, that makes yeah. sense. Usually. Yeah. And in yeah. a lot of like our fandom, the mantra is like often it can't be that simple. Like yeah, it has yeah. to be more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but, but like some, some, sometimes it is. It is just simple. Yeah. Uh, 
I, ironically, one of the theories, and I, I don't remember which one it is because I pulled the quote out of context, but one of the theories I had <laughs> at one point, um, I was I was going over um, something on, on Roshar and the Way of Kings and probably Spren because that's what was on my mind in 2011, 12, 13. And, and I had a line where I was like, so there are two possible solutions to this. Here's one, here's the other. And, but one of them, it, by, by Occam's razor, it must be this solution because it's simpler and more elegant. And it actually, in reality, ended up being the other, a little more complicated solution. There, there are some things that are not obvious. Like, I wouldn't say, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this, but I had a big theory about, like, ah, oh, the magical technology in the South, and I was completely wrong. Uh, but, like, the, the medallions in Southern Skadriel is quite complicated and like i don't think you would like oh yeah yeah obviously this is how it goes so like there there is definitely room for complexity but like but when you start inventing lots of terms and things and it's just like hmm, hmm hey, hemallergy just steals things but how would we have known that oh yeah. hemallergy spikes out the preservation and like warps these other creatures how the hell would we ever have no figured that out that doesn't make any well yeah, and I remember sense. there was a lot of discussion too around the mists and hemallergy, like mm -hmm. because it, we see the mist going away from Vin at some yep. point. And I think under the lightning rod theory, <laughs> one of the things was that you were actually sucking the mist in and they were vanishing because they were like oh, is that being what I said? evaporated. Yeah, or tough. someone, or maybe someone building on your lightning rod theory said that, but it there, was like there was a thing where I was like, Alamancy, you literally suck in the mists, and the mists are what lets you burn the metal. And it's like, well, you can do Alamancy away from the mists. It's like you, you can just do that. <laughs> but like technically, you do kind of need the the mists as preservation's body for Alamancy. So it's like kind of wrong, but also completely wrong. Like what's were there actual lightning bolts involved in the hemallergic lightning no, rod theory? No, it was like okay. it was burning the body's energy through the spike, and that was the lightning rod or something. I don't know. Look, we're going to put these... We're going to have a doc for you, and you can just go read these yourself and be like, dude, what, what was going on? Because if we narrate all these, we will be here a long time. Especially, did you have any good uh, things in the final Hero of Ages thread? Which you made, and I apparently reserved four forum posts and i had a massive seven part theory where i had like ah oh, part 4a 4b 4c through e uh and there were there were seven parts yeah <laughs> what, what yeah. Do, do you have some good ones there yeah so i i pegged say Z as the hero of you ages did. You which i didn't that. remember um <laughs> so it's funny. Yeah, we just don't remember that <laughs> it's, it's funny because during the book i so i went into uh hero of ages being like say Z is the hero of ages and Brandon convinced me I was wrong during the book. <laughs> I didn't think it was Ben. <laughs> and then, and then it was still a surprise at the end, even though I. And then, um, I I had a big thing about the deepness being like one mist creation and the mist spirit being in like another. We mist had no creation. idea what the mist spirit was. That was and, constantly very yeah. confusing. And Let's so, be real. I thought that the mist spirit was like preservations like champion and the deepness was ruins champion and they we each had like a champion, mist but yeah it, yeah I, yeah like so they each had like a mist uh uh construct yeah there was a lot of stuff about the lake the black lake uh yeah, you know that is some lake. weird deep lore about the weird black lake and the dark mist going yeah and, and david you were asking last night it's like are there still two different types of mists? We have not yeah. heard about that in a long time. Yeah, yeah. Brennan, Brennan said pre, pre alloy that there would now be two types of mist on Skadril, thanks to Harmony. And I don't think we've ever seen anything that indicates that is actually how he wrote it into canon. Yeah, but, like that might be just yeah. a thing that he said after Hero of Ages, but like, but like maybe because they're merging together that it's like one power yeah. and that's how the shards are like intermingling, right? Because they kind of yeah. are. I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Could also could also be a thing in the south. Yeah, I guess sure, they have ruined mist. They're like, Dark Ooh. mist. <laughs> Dark <laughs> mist. This like is evil. another good good gem from my theory post. Just thrown in at the end. Also, Critic Shaw is a hemallergic construct <laughs> with spires <laughs> strapping into the ground <laughs> meant to limit Ruin's <laughs> influence. So <laughs> you know, also I don't typical, know. typical comatose theory just like also 
<laughs> random out of left field. Yeah, like, this like, felt too well supported. I'm gonna put something in. Well, I like <laughs> I like this about the Miss Spirit. This is what I posted. It's doubtful that the Miss Spirit is the embodiment of preservation on the sole basis that it sounds really lame. Preservation <laughs> is a primordial for- force on par with ruin, not some loser Miss Spirit. It's like so right, but also so <laughs> incredibly wrong. <laughs> In a different thread, I just out of left field came up with, what if the mists are gaseous metal? <laughs> and I just like, that's the post. Like, what yeah. if this? And then people kind of stop <laughs> on it. Um, and then Eric comes in a couple of posts later and is like, well, in he- Well of Ascension, Elend clearly says it's water vapor. <laughs> so probably not. And there was some discussion about if it was ga- gaseous metal, like it would be poisonous <laughs> and killing people. and like really Uh, hot (laughs) yeah all all this yeah all this all this stuff how yeah temperature the science got into it it. it's so funny how like all of those things are valid but in retrospect are completely hilarious yeah like the miss were gaseous metal like that's yeah well not gaseous metal but the they're all reflected of investiture right it it is more complicated but it's like yeah it's 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 kind of right there, like, Cassius Metal. It's, yeah, a, it's this, of the same The thing. spirit of it is right there. You yeah, know, yeah, yeah. you're like, this is preservation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's like, no, that's ridiculous. How could it be that simple? <laughs> that, that's ridiculous. Ellen clearly says this. I love how it's just me who says this, because as anyone knows on Shardcast, my memory is terrible. I do not remember half the crap I say, just like all the time. Uh, and I was reading a lot of things, and I'm just like, wow, I don't know what I'm talking about this. Another thing that came out was like when we figured out the piercings of the hero thing, we started to realize there's these really tiny details that Brandon has hidden that have big significance. And so we started like just combing (gasps) through and being like, why does he pay attention to this? What does this mean? Are you going to talk about Reen's Obsidian? I'm going to talk about Reen's Obsidian. (laughs) So this was a theory by, I think Sarah G started it, but Sarah G was a big poster, but I like, I, she, it just spoke to me. I was like, you know what? Reen's Obsidian is It's something. important. It's so um, important. So for those of you who don't remember, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, it just didn't matter Reen, at all. Reen, uh, I think it should be all of you. When Vin is going through the things that Reen left behind after he vanished, <laughs> I love this. there's a piece of Obsidian that he took with them. Uh, some theories about the Obsidian were that they were an Inquisitor-like repellent, and that's why Reen got killed. <laughs> Because he didn't take his special obsidian with him. It was something from the mother. Um, and another thing you need to, uh, that's fun about these old theories, is Peter, or Ukla as he was then known, was a huge troll. Huge he read troll. The book already. Huge troll. And what so do you mean when was? <laughs> yeah. He just well, doesn't listen now. More openly, uh, yeah. But he, uh, during one thread, we were talking about the Metal Lake, and then he was like, Someone on this thread is on to something, and it's not like Reen's Obsidian. <laughs> but that was after Hero of Ages came out, right? Or was yeah, that before? Yeah. No, that was before. Wow! And it, did not, and it did not deter me. I was like, Peter, you're misleading me. <laughs> Seriously, though, I, I remember the Hero of Ages spoiler thread, and Peter's just like, you guys spent so much time on Reen's Obsidian, and it just didn't mean anything. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just shocked this is before peter was brandon's assistant so uh, that was that was good times what what was this thing about this alamancer hobo that i was talking about like this is like what what am i what am i talking about this is so that this was is a part thread. 4a apparently <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so the There was also a lot of threads about prophecy and whether the things like Ruin was changing prophecy or whether he had like set up the 11th medal as a way to kill the Lord Ruler. And I think you were trying to say the other explanation for that, other than Ruin interfering, (laughs) was that some random person, as you called it, an Alamancer hobo. I I do want to read this part again because it's funny. Please, please, please. Note. So this is Eric. uh, Note. I call him the Alamancer hobo because you would need to be an Alamancer to ensure the metal was Alamantic quality. This is the 11th metal, Maladium. And hobo. Because it could be any <laughs> random person who could have discovered it. 
It's just so logical. And you're like, also hobo. <laughs> I, I also have a theory about the one guy who originally created the terrorist prophecies. We did note that there were previous heroes, uh, previous heroes and stuff. But I'm like, there's this guy. He created the prophecies, and it's like, well, I mean, he probably did, but like through preservation, right? Like that's yeah. that's that's what actually happened. But man, I. I really go on about a lot. Uh, I, I like Marsh is going to commit suicide. And I love the additional questions at the end here. It was like, Atium's particular. It's the only one that has that's not a real life metal. Why does it only exist in the pits of past end? It's like, these are great questions. And I did not know the answer to that at all. <laughs> it's like, like, some of these are great questions. Like, why did the Chondra insist on being paid in Atium? Uh... Oh, I like, I was like, how was fair can be formed? And does it have any relationship with the mist? It's like, actually, we still don't know really how fair can be formed. Yeah. It... Where's the Atium cache? How are the Condor and Kolos created? Like, all these are great questions that Brandon really answered. It's like, oh, this is great. Why does the deepness kill some sick and others and leave others alone? <laughs> What's the logic behind that? It's like, excellent question. In retrospect, no clue how it worked. <laughs> Oh man! There were yeah, Brennan tied up a lot in that third book. I forgot about that. He really <laughs> tied up a lot. That was made it so good because he, there's so many lore questions. Well, and the the big thing about that book was the epigraphs too gave yeah. away so like so part of we were theorizing Brandon was releasing sample <gasps> chapters right. at the oh time. Oh my god! Yes, and so we were just like we had been theorizing about all this stuff and just so into it, and then these epigraphs were just like gold mines of information and so anytime a new chapter came mines. out we were like brandon you're just giving away all these secrets like what are you doing like I typical was... like final book brandon right when he can finally put his cards on the table that he set up yeah yeah, yeah. for this series and it yeah i we was convinced that minds. the epigraphs as the sample chapters were coming out was the lord ruler because Which I, everyone was, yeah. Yeah, ev everyone was because we never had anything said in the present. We didn't know that that was a thing that Brandon would do. So it was a great troll. And the best part was that we were so convinced that it was the Lord Ruler that we got three chapters. It wasn't like Oathringer where we got an entire part one or something ridiculous. <laughs> but literally chapter four, the next one after the sample chapters, the first one that we read in the book, it's like, I believe this is what Rorschach did. It's like, oh, no, this is not who it is at all. Like, we were, in, like, it wasn't stretched through the book. We were instantly got that theory completely kiboshed in the next chapter. And Peter's just like, you guys were so convinced for, like, no reason. <laughs> it's great. What, one more Hero of Ages thing I want to read, because this is just too good. Because I was on about this since 2008. <laughs> I doubt the Lord Ruler would have procreated. He made the terrorist breeding <laughs> program specifically to remove Ferrochemy. Since, since Ferrochemy and Allomancy are both hereditary, any children of the Lord Ruler would have the exact same abilities. The Lord Ruler fears a powerful challenger to his authority, so I'm absolutely certain he wouldn't have kids. All correct points <laughs> yeah. and i'm still livid that he actually did yeah. And, and, yeah. and brandon's like the fandom's taking this too seriously it's like no i'm taking this seriously it's me it's me it's ridiculous i've on it since 2008 i also just like completely hated zane that was good to go look at some old things of me just yeah. trashing on zane but well and you yeah. Because you didn't realize that Zane had a spike. Yes, I no, that's true. Like, yeah, it, when, I, when I first joined the forums, I, I hated Zane so much that it didn't <laughs> occur to me that the voice talking to Zane was actually a thing. And then it like it all made sense. But I just like I was I was just so happy he was dead. Like I was <laughs> legit just so happy he was dead. I didn't even care. This like, oh, this th this voice was real all along. I didn't even care. I was just happy he was dead. Another thing we did a lot of back then was when we figured out the crazy person hearing voices connection, it was like any crazy person. It was like, <laughs> is this like, is this ruin? Is this person crazy? Is this what, like, it was like, because we, we like did. we were talking about Vin's mom, right? Yeah, yeah, which, we, which, which, which was yeah. true. And we were talking which about the blood sacrifices, like the blood sacrifice for heme allergy had to be the sister. This is what makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and things like that. Uh, yeah. Because we, we didn't, 
she had to have heme allergy to be so strong, right, guys? Come on. Which is right and also not right. We should we should skip forward in time because I think after Way of Kings, we didn't really have too much to go off. Uh, like some, but it, it wasn't like Well of Ascension to Hero of Ages, right? Where we had just so much lore waiting for at our fingertips. Like, oh, I'm sh- yeah. I'm sure it'll be really fun doing Stormlight 9 to 10. That'll be that'll be a thing. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, we, we didn't like even really get Spren after Way of Kings. Like, I don't think people were clear on sh- that Shallan was bonding a cryptic. Like, nobody knew that Shallan was really becoming a Radiant for sure. Well, yeah, that, that like, is true. Yeah. It's like, what's Shades yeah. of I don't know what that is. And the link between like Spren and Shard Blades, like something that's so basic now, like in Way of Kings, like we didn't know 100% that Spren turned into Shard Blades or that, you know, oh, like yeah. we, didn't, was... we didn't know like so many of the Cosmere words, like all of the yeah. stuff's deep lore that we just like didn't know. And now we know so much more. So I think. I think theorizers nowadays have it a lot harder because we know so much more that it's hard to have like big theories that like are really mind blowing, you know? Yeah. Like, I think it's much harder. Yeah. And I think that's yeah. why I see like a lot of really complicated theories. I'm like, I don't know. I did big walls of text. I don't know about this big wall of text. Like before I even read it, it's just like, oh, that's long. Uh, not not to say that it is that it isn't right, but it's just like, hmm, this is real long. So I, I don't know. This being said, I do have a bunch from like, like from pre Words of Radiance stuff. Ooh, um, so these are going to be super crazy because yeah, we actually, did no crap <laughs> then. <laughs> well, I mean, so so ignoring things like where I come into the fandom, and I'm like, well, I really see Brandon as a darker author than Robert Jordan, um, <laughs> and also a post from like 2009 where I ask how to become an alpha reader. Um, ah, those are the days. I was so you were early shooting, on. shooting high, you know, just <laughs> like beta up. or gamma. You were like alpha reader. Well, so, 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 at the beginning, I didn't know there were different Greek to be, letter. To readers. be fair, I don't think people know the the scheme. The alpha readers are Brandon's writing group. Beta readers is it's a more widespread thing, and gamma readers are doing line edits. So that that's what that means. Yeah. In case you didn't know. Um, <laughs> Which probably didn't. you didn't. Uh, but I but I had a period of like two, maybe even three years in like 2011, 2012, 2013, where I was I was dead convinced shard blades had something to do with odium. <laughs> like they were they were either directly of odium or they were corrupted by odium in some way. Um and I'm and I'm trying to I, I have like I, I go on about this in, in numerous threads in those years. I can't that was believe like a we, big theory too. Like people was, believed that. I totally forgot that until we were yeah. researching for this. Like, oh yeah, that was a big theory pre words of makes, radiance. You know, they're they're weapons, right? And odium, like like war like it there's the logical bur- links the there. Eyes burn out. Yeah. That's still kind of freaky and weird. Let's be yeah, honest. So, so all the way back, 2011, Time Wasters Guide, Guild Guide, Time Wasters Guide, Guide. guide. Uh, I respond to some some topic and I go. I always assumed there was some relationship between Odium and the Shard Blades and plates. Possibly. I don't like the way people die if they're killed by a Shard Blade. The burning in the eyes makes me think about Voidbringers, and Voidbringers make me think of Odium. I'm not all sure all how these things fits. are true. <laughs> I'm not sure how this fits uh, into the vision of Dalinar where he saw Knights Radiant abandon their weapons and armor. Uh, and then later on in the thread, I go, I remember reading this epigraph and thinking that maybe the Shard Blades have a Voidbringer bound slash imprisoned inside them. Uh, Voidbringer bond, different... uh, bonding, bonding humans? <laughs> hmm, that's, that sounds... That sounds crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then in a in a different thread, now in the seventeenth shard, something. So I'm responding to the effect and the, the effect of intent on the acquisition of magic. Uh, posted is, by Windrunner in 2012. <laughs> after posted I by, had the main I- intent theory. Come on. Oh yeah. 2011. No. 2011. September 2011. 10th. 
Oh, that, that's was, after uh, Principle of Intent. Principle of Intent is. was no, February 2011. <laughs> I'm, Eric, saying. I'm not trying to veer credit here. <laughs> no, we're just, we're not going in order, is all I'm saying. Which we oh, well, said yeah, we no. yeah. We're kind of jumping around. Uh, well, I'll remind you what's happening. Yeah, so it was, it, it was a, it was a theory, and David might talk about it later, um, where he talks about the, well, how, how you get magic, and, and ties that to shard contents, lowercase i. No, lowercase I, I, dang it. <laughs> lowercase. And I respond with, I definitely think the thrill is associated with odium at least a tiny bit. <laughs> my, just... <laughs> my, my flimsy logic. I'm ready. <laughs> here goes like this. <laughs> Sil, Sil doesn't like shard, shard plates and blades. Sil is obviously connected to honor slash the almighty. Therefore, the almighty wouldn't have liked the shard gear as it is now. This implies something that changed, perhaps something about the actual shard gear, something that would introduce Odium's power to the formerly honor-only artifacts. Where else have we seen a mix between the two shards? In the Oath Pact. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Whoa, we, what is, this took a hard turn here. We have, <laughs> we have, we have, we have the heralds, servants of honor, <laughs> who only get to enter the world in order to defend it from a desolation. In their spare time, they live in some sort of hell. <laughs> As you do. Correct. I've always, I've always thought that this old pact is not very good business. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> You're not wrong. It sounds, it sounds like the honor... It sounds like Honor made a deal with Odium, and part of the deal was the fate of the Heralds. It would be possible that another clause in the, is the corruption of the plates and blades, <laughs> so that they induce an intense feeling of hatred, as seen through Dalinar's POV, in the wielder. I, and then I, in a different thread, yeah. It, it definitely, yeah. like, it, you're like, good, 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 veer way <laughs> <off."> Yeah. <laughs> It's also funny how ideas capture people and it kind of becomes, like you said, this was kind of like Odium and the Shard Blades was kind of your like hobby horse or the yeah. thing you kept coming back to. And you see that with like forum users today and like people just get attached to something and it oh, comes me too. Up, well, well, again and do, again. Right? Yeah. I, yeah. Like and, I remember and, I would work the metal lake into any thread. Like I was like, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. How, so it's like random theory about something else. I'm like, but how does the metal lake fit in? <laughs> The answer some is of, not much. Some of, <laughs> some of these theories just become lenses through which we see like the entire body of work that we have. <laughs> I see things in this way, and it's it's true. It's true. Oh man, that's funny, David. What you got? You got something funny? Oh, I'm trying to. This is, I can't tell sometimes like what's funny and what's funny to me, but they're all fun. So uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, we we got we got to see. Uh, I'm gonna. I'll jump into my Urethiru stuff because oh I was God. like, I was like a, I was one of the big people uh, that was really interested in Urethiru. I, I really wanted to know all about it. It was before I had any ebooks, so I read my library, checked out card cover of Way of Kings, and yeah. found every single Urethiru quote in it and typed it up by hand. Uh, it was great, and. Uh, but I, I had thought my big theories for Urethiru were it had to either be, because there was no way they couldn't find it, because obviously Rashar is incredibly well explored with the civilization of singers living next to Lothkar for 2,000 years. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, well but, explored. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, well, Yasa thinks it's not an automaton, so it can't be there. And so I was convinced it was either in Shinovar or it was in Shadesmar, and they would need to go to Shadesmar, which I am pretty proud that I was thinking about Shadesmar back then. But yeah, because three words of radiance. Yeah, yeah. But that was that was my big thing. So I was like, oh, it's it's obvious. It's got to be one of those two. <laughs> it's like no, no, no. It's just in the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a, to be fair. That's a really weird place for a city. Yeah. Until yeah. you realize what the oath gates are, it's like it doesn't make any sense. No sense yeah. is made here. What? Yeah. What did you think about your theory, Argent? Didn't didn't you have a theory on it? You 
you thought it was a flying city that fell and shattered the planes? Oh, I don't. Did I don't you originate this. the spaceship theory? I don't know. No, about no, 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 no. So not not the spaceship theory. Okay, okay. no. Um, so <laughs> you have you have to remember this is I've I've always been a, a big Blizzard gamer, and so this was like right yeah. in in the big like. This was when Blizzard and Warcraft and World of Warcraft were the, the biggest things in the gaming industry. And so, to me, Eurythir was like the flying city of Dalaran in right. that universe, which, which is literally a city on an island that flies around. And so, I, was, I, was, I, I, w- I wasn't dead focused on the idea, but I thought, hey, what if, what if Eurythir is also a flying city? Um, and I, don't, I think we had the, the closest to honor yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. It made a lot of sense. If honor is God, then, you know... <laughs> it's high up. It makes sense. A, a, a city closer to the heavens makes sense. How do you get a city close to heavens? You make it fly, it's right? It's going to be nearer to the storms. It's high. And, and then, for some reason, I had decided that it had fallen, <laughs> and it had shattered the planes. It's heavy. And I mean, come they're... on. It makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's pretty heavy. <laughs> yeah. And then, I mean, we also had, you know, Kaladin flying with the storm a couple of times, and he, even as, as far back as the Way of Kings, notices a pattern to the shattered planes. And so I figured, well, how do you get a, a you know, a big thing when it shatters and you get a pattern? It's like, it's like dropping a plate. Like, that's what he's seeing. He's seeing your ethereal has fallen into where the planes are, and they've <laughs> shattered in a pattern. Uh, and that's what he... I, I don't think I know about the shattered planes, man. Like, oh, I know. <laughs> like, we're never gonna go back there. Like, come on. Like, when it's are we? Don, it's a about? Don shard. When he brings in Don shards, he's gonna be like, back to the planes. Oh no, oh man. <laughs> uh, I, you know, about that closest to honor. I read a topic of mine that said, "So honors in the west? Does that mean odiums in the east?" <laughs> like, that's like, <laughs> it's like, oh. Hot take there, <laughs> Odium well, in the east. The ever storm does come from the other direction. Yeah. So, but like, but honors in the west. That's. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. But yeah. like I was like maybe the high high storms are of Odium because I was like that's east. It's not where honor is. It makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> and they're destructive. Yeah yeah. I mean they are. Like you can't read that first scene in Way of Kings where Calden is in the high storm like. I, I still love that part where you're getting oh the storms the storms are really bad and then you're like Kaladin is in the storm and Sills there so awesome that we got to see that on screen good job Brandon oh, but like it's I'm, it's not a nice place the high storm yeah. not not a fun time for Kaladin <laughs> not a fun time uh, when when earlier you you brought the high level of exploration that we have on the Rashar actually um, <laughs> I, I remember the theory there when he's flying there. I, <laughs> he's, he's too far south he's too far south or something i don't know <laughs> How do you not Calden, see Calden's dumb we all know that we love him but <laughs> doesn't make sense i don't know what it is uh yeah i mean th- th- to be fair he wasn't seeing like the entire yeah, like yeah. breadth of the land he was seeing like a city here and a city there and I also so. he's he's flying as the high storm for the like this has got to be an overwhelming experience right yeah, that's true. That's um, true. But I, but I remember the theory. It it wasn't one of mine, so I don't want to make too much fun of it. But there was a theory that the so the chasm fiends were the void bringers, mm. mm-hmm. uh, yeah. which was which was a little supported because of that drawing where Shalan draws a uh, like a page from one of Yasna's books, and it's a drawing, and it's a drawing that Adolin recognizes as, hey, this looks like an awful lot like a chasm fiend, and. And so the Chasm Fiends are Vorbringers, and the Pershendi are... So, so if you remember, at the very last vision that Dalinar has when he chats with Honor, Honor says he's going to try to help or that he's going to send help. Um, and, I, and I think I misinterpreted that or something and said, well, <laughs> what if the Pershendi are the help that he is sending and, and so <laughs> the Pershendi are uniquely equipped to deal with the problems on Rashar because they can grow this this uh carapace like armor and it helps them helps protect them from the from the storms and 
and the dangers of Rashar. And so they are Honor's help, and they've been fighting the Voidbringers, that is the Chasm Fiends, for a long time on the Shattered Plains. And something happens, and they can no longer do that. And so what do they do? They go to the Alethi and kill their king, <laughs> bait the Aleti to come to the Shattered Plains and fight the Voidbringers, who are the Chasm Fiends. <laughs> There, there was a lot of like chasm fiend. Like people like saw them like the thunder class, and Brandon kind of describes yeah. them pretty evilly sometimes. So like that persisted. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, and the like wondering about where the misconception about the chasm fiends being the Parshendi gods too. Like that was. Oh down yeah, there at that yep. time. Yeah, that is true too. That's a Cavalar thought, yeah. or something, yeah. right? Yeah. The the Alethi thought. Yeah, the Alethi. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I found one. This one, I it's more just demonstrates like the double standard you sometimes have when theorizing. So I I, I tore into this person a bit <laughs> over there being no evidence that the characters in the Pure Lake interlude are Galadon and Raiden. <laughs> <laughs> that I could kind of see where he was coming from. And when I read it with that in mind, I could kind of see it, but there's no actual evidence. It's just kind of a feeling. Um, so yeah, I say reading this with Galadon and Raiden in mind, it does make me think of them though. Perhaps with more evidence, evidence is capitalized, I could oh, be boy. convinced. And then later, uh, so and then I say, I respectfully disagree that it's Galadon. And then the next line I say, I'm sure that Hoyd is the writer of the epigraphs. I don't have evidence that this is not yet given, but my gut says it is him. <laughs> oh. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you need evidence, but it's obvious. You need evidence, me. but yeah. <laughs> the, these are all good things to think about when writing these things. And we, we actually yeah. posted a thing about how to talk in debates that Matt wrote, yeah. actually. Oh yeah, uh, that, that we, we can learn link that from, below too. Learn from experience <laughs> of doing experience, it wrong. Obviously, that's right. <laughs> we've uh, we've come a long way when it oh comes to goodness. these things. Yup, yup. Yep, Some yep. of us were were just complete jackasses on the forums early yeah. on. Yeah, I, yeah. I joined like specifically to prove one person wrong. Like I was like, <laughs> oh, this theory is. I, that's what I started posting. <laughs> Yeah, you read something and you just have to respond to it, right? Someone's wrong on the internet, I must. <laughs> I cannot allow this. Actually, on the on the topic of, of tearing into somebody's theory, um, I found an old reply of mine where somebody had the theory that Teravangian had spies in the Kulin camp. And so this is still post Way of Kings, but we don't have words of radiance. And so oh. we don't know anything oh. about the diagram or anything like that. Oh, nice. Solid. That was a good call from That's someone. <laughs> yeah. And so they're like, well, and and what is the best way to get somebody into the Kulin camp to spy on, on Dalinar and Adolin, whatever? You get a woman to flirt with Adolin because he's a known womanizer. <laughs> <laughs> in in retrospect... Solid. In retrospect, there is literally a member of the diagram. Yeah, damn. The, 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 yeah, yeah. Except that the person who, who put the theory together guessed the wrong woman. Oh, no. Uh, uh, but that's, that's solid. Is, that's solid. Guessed, yeah, no, that's, was it Janala or whatever her name? No, I think. no, no. No, it, no, it, was, it was something with, with M. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. It, it was it was one of those that only comes in a background conversation, and Eleanor's like, "But what about the M, M whatever?" And Eleanor is like, "Oh yeah, we had a falling out. She wanted to come with me to the plains to observe a battle." And Eleanor oh. is all shocked that a woman would want to to do that, <laughs> and, and and that's kind of the the hook that the the theory crafter had. We're like, "Why would some? Why would a woman <laughs> want to come with Adeline to battle?" They, she's uh, a spy. Like, Easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I have this theory. I, I posted... Ooh, this is a 2010 theory. September ooh. 2010. This is like right after Way of Kings where I'm like, shards can't remember their names. Like their original names. <laughs> <laughs> they, just, they just can't do it. They just... They don't know. I, I like how at the end of this, though, I put... I might be wrong about the shards forgetting their names. It's not like Ruin wouldn't be reminded that his name is Ati whenever he looks at some Atium. <laughs> that was my thought. I was like, and say, are like, what does Aeon mean for Aeon Door? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But, like, 
but I guess I'm going off that the part two epigraphs, like, they... Someone who's not a shard is referring to him as race rather than odium, right? Mm, yeah. And I guess that's what I was going off of, but it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, and we didn't really get as much how, how they were subsumed by the shards. Like, that was still, like, a newer concept, at least. It was a newer yep. concept. Mold yeah. it to the shards' mm-hmm. intent. <gasps> oh, no! Intent's capitalized! No! <laughs> Disaster! <laughs> This was 2010. Well, we this was 2010. We didn't have we didn't have capital I intent until relatively recently. Truly capital I intent. Yeah. No. no. Early no, early on we were treating this as a yeah, as, as a thing. Well, that's because it came from a Hero of Ages epigraph. Uh, Ruin was well molded to his shards intent. Yeah. You never you never saw that in September 2010 I actually capitalized I because I had always maintained that I never capitalized I because so, <laughs> to capitalize I, I. I look I'm going to edit this right now no one's going to know. No, I'm not going to do that. Uh, uh I, I feel I've like got... we need to talk about the principle of intent but yeah Yeah, David... yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it because the principle of intent I basically go on this long thing trying to figure out why Allomancy is of preservation, which amusingly still comes up to this day. This question is like, is Allomancy really of preservation? And I'm like, no. It's because the, the effects don't have anything to do with the shard. Like, that's, that's, not, that's not the important part. And I like, came up with this logic. It's like, well, you know, you're not using your own body, so it has to come from an external source, which that part was actually completely true because I actually asked Brandon on Reddit and he, how is Alamancy of Reddit? And he basically just like said that exact thing. I was like, yeah, that's canonical. There's some other parts that are a little less canonical where I kind of go on like Honor and Zeth because we, how, how the hell would we have known? It's like, well, it's an Honor Blade and the Honor Blades give surge riding. Everyone oh. knows that. Like how the hell I, would we have known that? I was oh, like no, adamant I, that it was not an Honor Blade. Like, <laughs> like in the word, like I literally always, I remember reading words of variance going, damn all right fine <laughs> <laughs> but i was like I, I had i had multiple theories where i was like talking about kaladin and his friend and then zeph and his friend yeah 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 but in like talking about like ooh, you're, you're swearing oaths that's honorable and like getting things so right but like then there's good old zeph how's he a surge binder if he doesn't have a spren i'm not totally sure but perhaps his strong oaths as a truthless provides the sufficient bond for otter's magic to work maybe there does exist a spren either way those oaths are intricately tied with zeph's radiant powers so i'm calling it right now if zeph breaks his oaths he will lose his powers which is like not true at all <laughs> But like there, there's some solid stuff that that theory, the core of it is correct, except for me going on a giant tirade about Way of Kings things. But like honor oaths, that's how you get the power. That does make sense. Uh, I, I, you commented on this, didn't you? Me? Well, yeah. So no, no, no I, I uh, did, I did. Yeah. Um, the principle of intent may have been the first time I interacted with chaos on the forums. <laughs> um. Or, or at least outside of like, um, hey, I have problems with my with my forum avatar and things like that. Right, yeah, yeah. My comment, I think it's on page two, yeah, yeah. begins with the following. Fantastic theory, Chaos. The core of it explains a lot of what's going on throughout the various shard worlds we've encountered. Oh, and it does it in a consistent manner we're used to seeing in Brandon's works. My only concern <laughs> is that maybe you're taking this too far. <laughs> And then I respond a little later. It's like, I do feel I took it uh, too far. Valid criticism. It's basically just like now. It's like, yeah, I did go on a crazy tirade. But, you know. That's our relationship for the past yeah, exactly, decade. Exactly. Nothing exactly. has changed. <laughs> but, like, the core of it's true. But it's like, ah, I'm trying to pr- be predictive, you know, like scientific theories. And it's like, ah, the predictive aspect didn't work. But the explanatory oh, yeah. part did. Yeah. No. What and that uh, topic that Argent mentioned earlier that I made that was like it was basically just I'm gonna make a second theory and we're gonna talk more about principle <laughs> of intent. Really, it wasn't really that distinct. But I was like, I was like, seems like if you want to get cultivations magic, you could be a farmer or something. You know, like I was like, that's that was like the level of complexity I took it to. And I'm like, maybe if you're really, you know, who's a hateful, farmer in Shinovar. Yeah, like that was like that was it. And I was like, I think I cracked it, guys. Cultivation <laughs> magic users yeah, no. are in Shinvar. T- still could totally be true. Yeah, no, that was that, that was his like the, the essence of, of David's theory that 
Shin farmers are the magic users yeah. of cultivation. Because magic. there's no farmers anywhere else on Rishar. No farmers. <laughs> or any sort of life. No oh, what? <laughs> the, one of the reasons the principle of intent spoke so well to me is because like a year back or whatever, I had a Time Wasters Guide post where I, so I, I didn't go nearly as far, but I noticed something that as you were recapping your theory here, uh-huh. um, um, reminded me how similar it was to something I had said. Oh, really? Down, down to the wording. Really? I like, so I respond to somebody in a thread that it doesn't matter what it is. And I go, um, I believe that the honor spren binding to surge binders are what gives them their abilities. It's a mutual relationship. The human gets surge binding, the spread gets, uh, the spren gets, uh, well, humanity. So Zeph's connection with his spren has been severed somehow. <laughs> if, if, if that connection is severed somehow, right, right, right. he'd lose his abilities. Right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because the, the principle of intent, that I, I was going off of Alamancy. That, that's yeah. the thing. But yeah, makes yeah. sense. Seth, Seth was very confusing at the time. Like, some people were like, well, maybe his friend turned into the blade. And we were like, well, we don't want to have Cell turn into a sword <laughs> that can't talk to anybody. So, like, That'd that can't be, boring. be it, You know, Cell like, turning like, into a sword. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's lame. Yeah. I definitely remember. Yeah. Thinking about that. That's funny. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, you, got, you, got, you got anything for us, Matt? Um, I found another one, actually. This one's older, again, right. uh, from 2007. Um, oh, what, 2000, wait, 2007? Yeah. Um, wow. Wait, and you it's were on a thread. The... Oh, was this your first account? I think so. Well, unless, maybe I miscounted, because I just found a post from me from... Oh, no, it, sorry. It's The thread started 2007. My post was 2008. Oh, okay, so, okay. Jeez. So, yeah, we're good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's on uh, the Hoid phenomenon <laughs> noticing this is, this is top tier stuff at the time we didn't know what it was um so this is me noting i say all three hoids have things in common but they are not the same person <laughs> first of all they all depend on their on their tongues for their trades they're an informant beggar storyteller <laughs> Um, they're both lower down in the class system but i wasn't sure where the storyteller fit Still trying to find more connections. But what's interesting about this thread is this was pre-Peter being on the inner circle. So he's kind of needling Brandon about what's going on with this. And Brandon at one point earlier said, uh, no, no comment or something like that. Um, Dragonsteel Entertainment has no official comment on the Hoyt phenomenon, <laughs> if indeed it exists. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it is so- it's it is a, funny how much more Brandon talks about these things. It's like, oh, yeah, 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 you yeah. Know. Yeah, yeah. So, and then, yeah, Peter says, I think they are the same person. How that works, I don't know. But I assume Brandon has something planned. Um, <laughs> Peter had read, um, at that point, I think, uh, Dragonsteel or one of the unpublished books, too. Yeah. So he he was also saying, oh, like, Hoyd shows up in some of those. But I thought maybe he had just repurposed it. Yeah, yeah, um, he wasn't yeah. sure. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 amazing to me how how some of these earlier thoughts, theories, hypotheses we have are in some ways so close to the truth and, so and some wrong. other ways they're just so wrong. Yeah. Hemalurgy yeah. can't just steal powers. Come on. It could yeah. do that. It, it I mean it does that as well, but I mean come I like Gaseous metal. This one from twenty eleven where uh I think I had Josh ask questions to Brandon on my behalf. So Josh is saying, is Aona's shard name Devotion? Uh, and Brandon's like, Raffo, because it's like, it, I think it may actually be Devotion, but I'll have to look. It might be a synonym. And Josh is like, is Sky Unity? And Brandon's <laughs> like, um, Raffo. Josh, passion. Uh, Brandon? <laughs> What Raffo? <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you. You already kind of pulled out of me what Iona was. <laughs> it's like I I can't remember. I maybe Josh was spitballing on passion, but I know, uh, Sky being Unity was a theory. Yeah, uh, oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Because sure. they, you know, F- United F- World wanted to unify the yeah, unify the world. Yeah, and it's just funny yeah. after Stormlight Archive how, how much yeah. those Unity and Passion are a little different now. Yeah. <laughs> 
I definitely thought that like the devotion dominion like hybrid was going to become unity in the same way that harmony had become oh man a fusion thing like that was a strong belief of mine harry and i had like theories about devotion and dominion and like why is it region based we never got close like the answer is just so simple the yeah. power is in the cognitive realm that's and the, there's location there i was like oh and we I had remember, those, like crazy theories that oh and the longest thread like the, i remember that discussion thread and it yes. was just like so devotion, long. dominion and convergence oh yeah this is real long and carry how long over one, oh yeah what I, uh why it was region locked i don't think there's anything particularly funny but like this, mm-hmm. oh god well and you also, know it's, when i start inventing terms i just know that i'm wrong it's, it's yeah. like, <laughs> if you'd allow me i'd like to name this intermingling effect as convergence as something important <laughs> <laughs> it's like see i just know that when i start inventing terms it's it's not going well <laughs> that's that's just that's just me that's just me but you have to keep in mind, too, that like at this point, we didn't have the understanding of the three realms that we do now, too. So like, yeah. like the cognitive, like the cognitive realm thing, it's like it makes so much sense now. But like, I this think even then it was like this is pre words of radiance. Even. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, like, well, we had a we soul, kind of, but yeah, we knew we knew about the realms, but like our understanding of how they work in the mechanics yeah. of the three realms has really developed in the last couple of books. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, though. I want to I want to take the the thunder class theory that I had oh, that, I, that I alluded to earlier. <laughs> so it's not it's not super spicy, uh, and it's and it's one of those things that is in some ways very wrong and it, in other ways not so wrong. I'm responding to somebody, um, or maybe it's I don't I don't think it's my own thread. I'm responding to somebody who talks about thunder clasts and chasm fiends, okay. and I and I so outline ready. some facts, and I go <laughs> my theory is that since thunderclasts were brought up from stone, possibly by void bringing... <laughs> yeah, that's a thing, sure. <laughs> Ooh, this is topic 99 on 70 Shard. This is like old topic, low numbered topic numbers. I, I was there day one. Yeah, yeah, you were, you were. Uh, or, or whatever, yeah. But um, so possibly by void bringing, they need a giant gem, gem heart, as a focus. Ah, using that There's focus th- word. <laughs> We loved that <laughs> back then. There, there seems to be a relationship between certain types of surge binding slash void bringing and the way Fabrials work. The two being natural and artificial manifestations of the magics on Roshar. You need gems to hold stormlight you use for soul casting and possibly other form of surge binding. So it could be possible that you would need a ton of stormlight to create a beast as massive as a thunderclap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> in in addition to all of that, oh, yeah? we have those spren people can only see around freshly killed chasm fiend. That's true. It's also a sharp left. Yes, it is. <laughs> they made me think of Fabrio's and the spread people trap in them to make them work. Maybe when a chasm fiend dies, the magical energy that kept it going, its spren, goes away. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, that's... That, that like, is actually oh, yeah. true, though, because the spren are yeah. di- dead, right? I, like, I, I, I nailed the fact that chasm fiends bond with a spren. You nailed yeah, it. Yeah, there's elements there that are... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, there's obvious some hand waving here, <laughs> but it feels like a puzzle pieces fitting together, which just don't have all the pieces. And so, what's your theory about thunder? Oh, that they just need a giant gem heart. Is that that's it? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, it's like, How does this relate? <laughs> like, here? Oh, oh my god! Oh, that's funny. Oh, can I do my Kentrees think one? David, all right, David, what you got? Okay, so this is this is back before Discord when we still had our IRC chat. Oh boy, ye really old fun. days. Yeah, and how I and how I got to know a lot of these guys in the first place, like more oh, directly. Yes. I think my Actually, trolling of you was quite substantial, if oh, I remember yeah. correctly. <laughs> it was like yeah, very no. substantial. Yeah, it, there was a little bit of that, but uh, so we were like talking about it, and we and we were talking about uh, Mistborn, and we hit that epigraph from the Final Empire where Quan is talking about. They're talking about how Quan was studying if trees could think. And this is like early realmatic theory. So 
we're like we know the three realms exist and we're like wait can trees think like can they and so we have like a long thing and i post this poll here where i'm like case and i were both stunned by that last bit anyone who knows realm max can tell you that it's virtually certain that everything exists in all three realms <laughs> so naturally a tree would have a cognitive aspect probably one stronger than your average rock anyway <laughs> um, uh and uh one of one of the admins at the time uh will was like determined this was not true he was he was not in the theory community much but he he made topic, the art it doesn't match shades mar but he did he did the art for that it, it does look nice, though. I love it. But, uh, it's, but it's vaguely like Shades Mar. <laughs> but this topic about whether or not trees had cognitive aspects got contentious enough that Josh had to step in and close it, and we were done. And he was like, and "There's it, no it, way to. There's no way to know. We're never gonna like. We'll find out when we find out." <laughs> and, and and the funny thing is that Josh's post where he closes it has two down votes. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> that's, that's, I that's quality. Down votes so much. That's quality. <laughs> But like, yeah, it was got so contentious. Uh, it was just like, well, we have to, we have to lock it. But the poll oh. is fifteen to one in that it is Realmatics and one uh, Windrunner is Silly Pants. So that I did not put in the poll that was edited in by an admin. Oh, that was Will <laughs> edited that in. Yeah. Ah, yes, him abusing his authority. I haven't seen him in a while. Nailed it. Oh my goodness, I have made. I, 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 I think I have to talk about Mist Fabrials yes because i one of my long-standing things that was always a great mystery until bands of morning was brandon vaguely alluding to the southern skadrians it's like i'm not even gonna tell you what's happening on the other poll and he's just like yeah trolling us the entire time i'm like southern skadrians and then there's like this hint it's like of some technology that they're using yeah. and, and i'm like sorry did yeah did southern skadrians did he first raise that in the Hero of Ages Q and A? No, I in think the that's where it was in the well, that and the epigraphs. Yeah, right. or, sorry, yeah. annotations. Yes, annotations. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, because he was talking about like genetic experiments that yes. Rashik was conducting in the northern schedule, and so he was saying, "Hey, but he's also got a control group in the south." What is up with that? Ha! Ah, still, yeah. Uh, it was so cool. <laughs> the Lord Ruler in kids is like, oh, gets me going. Uh, but I was just like trying to figure out how would they have magical technology? And I'm like, oh, they just, it, like Stormlight, they just put mist in, and it's mist fabrials. Uh, and that, that's how it works. And I'm totally wrong. I still think that could maybe work if someone the, did things correctly, though. Like, you, we just didn't know that harmonium exists like the concept of investiture in a solid form you're like you know like, it all works it's just just well but it's a tiny, it's a tiny well but like the actual explanation for the magical technology is re requires harmonium requires these other things requires unsealed metal mines you have to go through several hoops here yeah. that's definitely it, one of the ones where more complicated it's it's not the simple answer here it was a little more complicated than that <laughs> yeah i was i was kind of on board with the miss fabrials thing when i was and i had a i actually replied to that thread yeah, and, yeah. I, and i did a, a point by point breakdown of well this these are the components you I need made this in 2013 it. wow that's a lot uh <laughs> That's real. Uh, these are the components you need for a Rosharan Fabrio. And here is what you propose for a Mist Fabrio. Mm -hmm. And so here's a thing that matches. Here's a thing that matches. And then, so these two things need to be equivalent to this one thing that you're proposing. So therefore, something's missing. Uh, I like this one commenter who's like, interesting idea, but are Mists even necessary? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> get cutting right into the core of it. <laughs> like, what if you could just do it? <laughs> I wanna I wanna bring a gem from um from 2011. Oh, going back to you. so excited. Um, uh, well, so so it's actually a, a a decent theory of mine that's completely wrong, but it has just a nugget of of hey, this was right. We are back in in Time Wasters Guide, oh, and okay. um, so 2011, and I go, I'm I'm responding to somebody, and I say, well. Reading this makes me think, and so I'm quoting an epigraph saying, they changed even as we fought them, like shadows they were that can transform as the flame dances. Assuming this is really referring to the Voidbringers, and assuming the Voidbringers really are the Prashendi, so remember this is coming out of the end of the Way of Kings, 
Oh, this um, is good. <laughs> we haven't seen a single indication that they can change forms, especially <laughs> in a swift manner. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's gone. Maybe, maybe they can grow their chitin-like armor at will, but it doesn't seem like that is a fast process. Could this be an argument against the claim that the two are the same, or Shandy and Voidbringers? Or maybe the Voidbringers aren't as human-like as Yasna seems to think. <laughs> maybe. Maybe the Prashendi are the void bringers, but somehow inhibited, weakened. There are some really good nuggets and hilarious wrongness. This is so <laughs> funny. It's like, are the void bringers inhibited, weakened? I mean, like, well, they're not quite the parchment. They're not the full void bringers, but also, it's like they and don't also the change. Prashendi, yeah, like Quickly. to me, this is this like I'm I'm almost nailing the hey Prashendi and then forms of power type of thing. Uh huh. But then, like, totally not. <laughs> Just like, no, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> yeah. I, it's funny. I think it is, like, a little bit of credit to the foreshadowing, too, that we, like, end up along, like, the right lines. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, we're always kind of, we don't get the details a lot of times. But we'll usually, be like, connect the right dots and be like, there is something here. We're, we're not, like, so attached to a theory that we're upset that we're wrong. Like, I don't think no. that's ever happened to me. It's like, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. I'm totally happy yeah. with that. that. I can see how that works that way. And usually Brandon's explanation makes more sense than the theories that yes. are wrong, right? Yes, like, it's is, like, oh, true. yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I had, a, I had a bit about how I thought Shalan's shard blade was her father's. <laughs> I, I found a post where I'm literally going, you know what? I know that we know that Shalon's lying right now, but her fundamental aspect is being truthful. I don't think she's ever even told a lie before now. <laughs> <laughs> That that is incredible. Yeah, like I, I'm like oh, and, I, and like in the same breath, I'm going. And Delinar is clearly a stone ward. And <laughs> oh yeah, so so yeah, this is this is actually super super interesting. I had completely forgotten this was a thing. Like so, coming out of the way of kings, we didn't know like half the orders. Yeah, they, we did. We knew one. We knew one of the orders. <laughs> we know Windrunner well, and Stone Ward, right? Mm, you're right, Stone Ward. I forgot about them. Yeah. Um. Okay, maybe maybe I'm thinking like, no, but it, but in words of radiance, we knew all of them, didn't we? Yeah. Oh yeah, we, no, we we still no, we still didn't know all of them. No, we did. no, we got all of them. They were I all in the epigraphs. We just didn't know where they were okay. on the table and post mm-hmm. words of radiance. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, and so and and yeah, I remember that. And somebody somebody had somebody was going to go to a signing and they had printed the the surge binding chart yes. from the yes. beginning of the way of things. that is true. And they like they handed it to Brandon and yes. they were like, okay. Put names on these things. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so oh. Brandon, so he didn't don't give us this, all of the way. answers. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. No, please um, don't do that. He didn't give us all the answers back then, but I, but I remember for some reason there was, and, and I remember because I was putting together a thread where I was like, okay, let's compile all of this info. You wanting to go through all uh, ten friends? That's so out of character. For we you. had. <laughs> Um, we had Dalinar penned as a as a stone ward, yeah. but we had the stone wards placed in the bondsmith slot. Is I think what what was happening, oh. and then and and somebody had updated the table that we were putting together because it was a community effort, oh, and they had updated radiance for sure. They had up, definitely yeah, they yeah, had yeah, yeah, updated yeah. Dalinar to say, because it was a bullet point list, and, and they had, oh no, it, it was a list of known surge binders, is what it was. Mm. And so we had Windrunners, Kaladin, Zeth, you know, Lightweavers, Shalan, whatever. Bondsmiths, Dalinar. But our Bondsmith label was where the Stone Ward was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I really latched onto the resolute builder as being Dalinar from that table. Like I was like, oh, it's him. Yeah. Like this is it. It fits. We're we're done. <laughs> done. Easy. And then you know yeah. you get can't us talking about Odium before in Way of Kings. It's like Odium's so mysterious, and he just shows up in part two of Oathbringer. It's just it still is like, oh my goodness, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I think that here here's my like biggest swing and a miss that i've got i'm, gonna, I'm I'll so throw ready it out. i'm ready so 
This is timeline. This is post Way of Kings. This post is 2012, along with every post that I made for forever. Uh, <laughs> Apparently and, so. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but and we have just finally like got the confirmation that Hoyd is the author of the letter for sure, at least like relatively recently. Yeah, yeah. And so this is a paradigm shift. We know. We know something about Hoyt goals, a fact. Uh, and so I came up with the belief that Odium's general MO was really just too caught. Co- he would just show up on a planet where there were shards and he would cause a desolation there. And like that was <laughs> and like I was firmly convinced that lost in the history of Cell, there had been a desolation when he had shown up to kill yeah, Aona sure. guy. And oh yeah, no, and I like I believe that he had taken out the original Elantrians and that's why they were dead because he'd sl- it's like the Voidbringers had got them all and just like all the Dockor monks. I was like, this is it. Like this is this is pretty <laughs> clearly how it it must have happened. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it was back when we were like really like we still really didn't understand the oath pack. So I like had a very strong no. that it was like basically like a game of chess between odium and honor where they each got like their own certain pieces like the heralds and whatnot and you're I was not very, wrong i was very convinced that i understood the oath pact in 2012 <laughs> we we all had very very strong head cannons on on what the oath pact was and wasn't thank goodness for Oathbringer chapter 38 to put an end to this <laughs> madness because it's like no 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 this is what the oath pact is this is what the other fact is. I love this chapter. Oh my god! Oh yeah, uh, Matt, you've been you've been quiet. You got you got some yeah. for us. <laughs> I, I have a couple, um, but Let's do it. I don't. I've had some breaks from the fandom too, so sometimes uh, yeah, uh, that, that's, true. Storm, that's true. The storm, the stormlight stuff. I don't have as much. That's um, why we bring you to the show. Okay, this one I found. Uh, I don't even know what I'm saying here, though. I'm saying something about the door and the pool being opposing shards. So, like, the door is <laughs> one thing. Take. And right, because we pool. have to pair every shard together, right? Like, yeah, was, yeah, 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 yeah. This this was in 2010. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So the door, and I I distinguish between Aeon door and the door. And that Aeon door is a magic system or interpretation of the door's power, like Clay Shan. So that's, you know, but yeah, then saying, but also the earthquake might have been caused by the shard leaving or banished. We already have a link, although tenuous, between earthquakes and the shards with ruin. Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> true. He was just trying to find um, <laughs> yeah, He did do yeah. earthquakes. That's true. You can't um, deny but I do. <laughs> And then I also have a Hoyd theory in this one. I say, I don't think Hoyd is one of the shards that Brandon is talking about. Um, we only his world hopping abilities connect him to the shards. Um, I think Hoyd may be the consciousness that split off from the shards, mirroring what happened on a smaller scale to preservation. Obviously not true now. Um, so yeah, that's a fun one. I also found one. This is just me being uneducated where I say, <laughs> Since when is Hoyt immortal? And then, <laughs> and then Eric, you come in here. Let me see. I'm just like, yeah. Since when is everyone's talking about Hoyt being immortal? And I'm like, since when? Since when is Hoyt immortal? And then you I'm come in, in and there. say, you say Brandon said Hoyt was there when Adels- Adenalsium was shattered. Also, it's been said it takes a very long time for a person with a shard, say ruin, is molded to its really purpose, really well with P. its purpose. No. Yeah. Yeah, Oof. and so oh, I I'm venture getting, at least getting, centuries, uh, more likely mil- millennia, for all practical purposes, he's immortal. So you shut me down. Getting, Real getting flashbacks to to honor's purposes. Oh, oh I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. honor's uh, purposes. Oh man, God, I, I I hate that. Uh. I had a giant theory. This this is another tangent that I I'm consistently on, or was for a while about what is a focus. What is a focus? <laughs> we know focuses. We in this like yeah. so. The too long didn't read is that ultimately focuses are 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 not really a magical thing. Really, kind of like it's, it's like kinda, a distinct part of a magic system. Yeah, 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 so. yeah. And it's all like, what are the Rashar and focus? Because Brandon told me actually that the commands are the focus for awakening. 
It, it, was, it was the long before the before times before we'd recorded everything it was like he told me specifically and i was like okay the metals allomancy uh the the shapes for cell and i just had this super long theory on realmatic attributes that's like well the focuses depend on how much each magic system is in each of the realms and then i made a 3d plot that <laughs> I, I, like i made it uh, there's it's still on 17 shard where you can actually rotate that plot uh to see wh- where where the dots are yeah you can the, do that it still works it's so cool <laughs> i think so well yeah because i just uh put it I, on i remember that i was so impressed by that yeah i think yeah yeah fully interactive version for your viewing pleasure yeah 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 it's totally still works i just kind of feared something had broke since 2012 you know? <laughs> no 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 this is in the staff section no one knows about this section except now uh and i'm like plotting <laughs> each of the different magic systems they have different colored dots uh and it, it i'll just it's like oh focus is not really matter. <laughs> like, it's yeah. just not really a thing <laughs> Yeah, I found one of mine where I've got a lot of Venn diagrams that I use to explain how <laughs> cognitive aspects exist and just like merging. I'm like, well, I'm just like the spiritual aspect of a shard is a huge circle and the physical aspect is very small. Therefore, they are stupid. You know, like, <laughs> Wait, what? what is that? It, well, I was trying to explain why shards didn't have like their own mind to them when they had like a lot of power. And my, oh, like my the shard was, itself. Oh, yeah, I remember uh-huh, this the now. Vessel. Yeah, yeah, I was trying to understand, like, my belief was that the cognitive realm was created by the interaction between the physical and the spirit. And so I was like, oh, if you're not anchored well enough in one realm, you won't be able to think. And that was that was kind of like getting into the spren thing and like Sills bond. And it and that was when I That's believed so that funny. Kelsier was immortal because people believed that he was a god and that was enough to anchor him. <laughs> Look, that could be helpful. It it, could be. It, it <laughs> to be, be fair, but... that could be helpful. It, but yeah, that was. I was like, oh yeah, clearly he's worshipped as a god, and that anchors him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's like some old school stuff. Was like, ah, the the Greek gods have power because people believe in them, and now people don't believe in them, so the Greek gods are weak. You know, like that sort mm-hmm, of fantasy yeah. idea. Oh yeah, that's, and, and that's a, that's a, that's a, like a massive idea in fantasy, right? Oh yeah, that yeah, yeah. Gods yeah. get their power from their worshippers. Yep, yep, yep. Mm-hmm. And we didn't really understand how cognitive stuff worked at the time, so not yeah. at all. the 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 idea of a cognitive shadow was just like, woo, no idea. Yeah. We just like knew Kelsier was somehow alive, and we were just like, okay. <laughs> well, we we knew he picked up preservation, but it wasn't yeah. until secret history that it's like, what does that mean? How did he do that? And it's let's just say it wasn't clear for a long time <laughs> mm-hmm. and did we know that from the books that was from stuff brandon said i was here of ages or from spoiler the, thread yeah. after oh yeah I yeah because he said, people noticed when kelsier spoke to vin yep like the right. giving you power and that kind of triggered people asking if kelsier was speaking to her and yeah, yeah and brandon right. was like well it's a good thing kelsier was there oh yeah <sighs> he, he said that I... yeah I can't believe we were I, more confused about that when we were like, oh, yeah, Kelsey, you're held preservation for a little bit. But yeah, we, we just like took that in stride. It's like, yeah, sure. Like, cool. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously, though, I think I completely missed that one, actually, because yeah. I, I remember when I when I got to that bit in Secret History, it was it was a big moment for me. Oh, no, no. We, yeah, we we'd talked about that for a long time. It's old lore. Um, I've got some some like near words of radiance bits here. All right, let's go. A couple of. A couple of pieces on Truth Watchers and Im specifically. Oh boy, nice. Uh, oh, because so we get we, we get his interlude. I think we we got his interlude early. We also got, I think, a partial reading of Lift's interlude, and then the full interlude later on. And so I don't know where in this timeline these bits come in. Around there. Um, but I'm I'm responding to a word of Brandon from a Seattle signing, uh, and I'm I'm thinking about surge binders or whatever and heralds and i go pala pilaya uh is also a curious one <laughs> that i in that name <laughs> <laughs> that was wrong on the wiki for a long time long time <laughs> it, it, it was no and to be fair me saying pala is actually good here uh is also a curious one though i can't even begin to fathom what you would do with growth and light so i'm thinking because i <laughs> <laughs> the surges right 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 uh, light weavers weave the light the appearance the form of something to transform it into something else 
though I fail to see how that differentiates them from the else colors. So Pala's order manipulates the light, the shape of living things. <laughs> and could, physical trans- <laughs> could physical transformation be possible under surge binding? Her essence is pulp, after all. <laughs> the bo- the body, the essences, the body focuses. Oh man, we Ess- we use that chart the- a lot. It, it was they such were- a red herring. <laughs> yeah, the body focuses don't matter at all. <laughs> I mean, hold maybe. up, there is no. It matters in like Fabrial soul casting. Yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. But in a, but in a well, the essence, in a, it's not in a, the body focuses. Yeah. Yeah, we don't we don't know whether the body focuses are gonna, yeah, yeah, gonna yeah. come into play anywhere. Yeah, uh, I had a theory where uh, I was examining. No, s- somebody somebody had a theory where they were like, well, surge binders get their stormlight through their body focus. So Kaladin, as a windrunner whose body focus is breath, uh, like inhales stormlight. Yeah. And I go, yeah, but there are orders with body focus of like hair, <laughs> or there is exhalation. Exhalation is also one. And I was like, yeah, are they going to exhale stormlight only? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, anyway so, uh, so, this, so another, another, um, another signing thread where I'm responding to Word of Brandon, still before Words of Radiance. I go, interesting that Yim's order, Yim's order's words might be Windrunner's take after Jezrian's protecting attribute. I don't think Shalan has found hers, and we don't know about Yasna though it would make sense for them to deal with honesty, truthfulness, and wisdom, respectively. Pretty good. I, also have, an aster- uh, I have an asterisk there, but I haven't copied what I mean by the asterisk. <laughs> um, some, some of you can't verify this. Oh, because the steel hunt was going on. Okay. Oh, it's steel hunt. Yep. That's it. Some of, you, some of you can't verify this, but Lyft seems to be onto something related uh, to the loving attribute of her order's patron, Vedeladev. I say this so we can uniquely identify the shoemaker as a potential member of Order 5, Pala's Order. That's pretty good, though. Um, and then later on, back to him, though, he'll probably lean on the giving aspect of Pala. Learned would be kind of... would kind of also fit him, but if I had to choose one, I'd go with giving. Oh, so I'm hypothesizing about his, his ideal. Uh, so something like, I will give to those in need. This must have been... We, I don't think we got the full Yim interlude because clearly you're thinking that he's going to be alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I feel like we, we didn't get that uh, last bombshell there where uh, Nail totally kills him. Uh, oh, yeah. In Words of Radiance. Oh, oh, this reminds me there was... Oh, I'm so upset this was not my theory. Uh, somebody, somebody just nailed... Sorry. <laughs> nailed the fact that darkness the person like chasing lift and yim was nalan like wow. i remember when when they yeah. noticed the the crescent scar mm. birthmark whatever and tied it back to the opening chapter of the way of kings yeah. oh and they were I like would, this is the same person i was such a herald skeptic like anytime anyone put like a herald in the uh in like the gavilar dinner i was like there's no way it's a herald why would they all be there that's so dumb <laughs> <laughs> i'm just wrong like there's like eight heralds there <laughs> practically i like how uh i i have this is this is a very old topic where i'm hypothesizing what the almighty's shard is and i'm like therefore a few candidates unity honor <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because I'm like, well, this has to unite them, so I made unity, I guess. <laughs> I was like, oh a, man, the unity. Yeah, I was like a big. I'm. I got one of my origin things was trying to put the shards into a structure. You know, as yes, everyone does at some was, point or another, yes, as, as right. everyone does. Yeah, yeah. 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 many do. attempts at that. Like, I yeah, <laughs> I know. I, was, I, I did an attempt to it that we all try. Yeah, I was yeah. like obsessed with the idea that they weren't. Like we're like, well, ruin and preservation are opposites, but they're also complementary. So we have to find shards that complement each other and like work together. And I had like a whole set of pairings, and I'm like, got it, yeah, <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> and we we still don't know if all the shards actually have an opposite, right? No. Or yeah, like, yeah, we, we have still... no idea. We don't yeah. really know. Yeah, at least they don't have like di- like they're not all diametrically opposed. Yeah. But I, I'm sure there is like a general ration, loose rationale for how they exist. Yeah, they're not yeah. going to be as 
diametrically opposed as ruin and preservation. That's like the most opposite, apparently. I have some some random sound bites from here let's and there. Where, uh, let's do it. I'm ready. I, yeah, I think I think we got most are... of our stuff in. So let's let's. Mm-hmm. let's uh, wrap up. I uh, so all of these are going to be very out of context, but they're like pre words of radiance. Fantastic. Um, it could be that he Zeph got mixed up with the void bringers, which brought the punishment being truthless upon him, <laughs> which in post Oathbringer world. A Shin man getting mixed up with the Voidbringers? It, it, it's that's... one of those things that you say out of context that sounds completely insane. So also, if you have things in the forums or Discord that sound completely insane and people are like, that's ridiculous. <laughs> it's like, that does not mean you're wrong. It's true. <laughs> I, was, I was just galaxy brain two books ahead of everyone else. <clears throat> Um, I had a, I had a bit where I was doubting that Yasna was a natural soulcaster because if she had been one, then the ghost bloods would have tried to recruit her instead of kill her. There, there was a lot of discussion about Yasna and her soul casting. Oh my god, so much! She used a garnet. Did she actually need the garnet? Oh my the god! Oh yeah, smoke stone the garnet. in her to, soul to, caster to, cracked. Why to, did it to, crack? To be fair, Matt. I'm pretty sure we've had that conversation on this podcast. Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> like, we've definitely had this discussion as we're talking yeah. about soul casting. Yeah. And it's just a massive tangent on those. Yeah. Uh, I had a, a theory, not a theory, but a mini theory where I'm like, uh, maybe the reason Syl is so dumb is because she is so strongly of honor and honor is splintered and <laughs> went. <laughs> And I'm I'm contrasting this to Windle, whom we've gotten a little bit from like right. a, from, a, ah, from right. early reading. And I go, well, so cultivation is not, and so that's why Window. And so I go, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> the reason Sill and presumably the other four Mayo orders bonding spren show so much less knowledge than Window is because she is not in her normal state due to honor splintering. I claim <laughs> that all parentheses, bonding, question mark. Spren are supposed to be as knowing and functional as Window, but Odium effectively crippled half of them. Huh. And then later in the same thread... So right, but so wrong. (laughs) Later in the same thread, I don't know why, but I say the following. (laughs) Shalan does see a single Spren. However, due to the cryptic's nature, the singular Spren appears as if it had multiple bodies, size, aspects. Interesting to me, but not terribly well supported. <laughs> Apparently, my the Devotion Dominion stuff is that Carrie and I worked on. We worked on, on like, that was like the first Shard Keepers podcast, oh. which basically is the progenitor to this podcast. So Shardcast history, we it, originally were like, oh, the theory cast will be separate from the main shard cast but then we just didn't know what to do with the main shard cast so now the main shard cast <laughs> yeah. where we do theories we do character we do fun things we're trying we're trying to do a mix of all those right but uh yeah. don't need multiple casts <laughs> well i mean we'll, we'll probably have some other projects when yeah. we do them yeah i mean that that's a great great statement eric we'll have other <laughs> shows when we make them you mean when you can't argue with logic like that, really? It's like, a tautology is a tautology. I mean, what are you going to do about that? <laughs> yeah. You can't argue with that kind of logic. It's true. I had a big theory on why the unmade were the Prashendi gods. <laughs> yeah, that, that didn't turn out super great. There were, there were some points there. You did we, this after Words of Radiance, though. We didn't know. <laughs> no, in the, the, the epigraphs <laughs> do imply that the yeah. unmade are not the... I am, the I am citing Words of Radiance things, and I'm going, well, so Esh and I, so... It's a little um, soft, but yeah. Mm, oh, I disagree yeah, 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 completely. Yeah. My, my, my mindset, <laughs> po- Words of Radiance was, oh, this confirms the unmade are their gods. No, and like, it, um, yeah. mm, mm. no, like well, you, you may disagree with how I interpreted them in 2013, sure, 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 but sure, I found sure. a lot of supporting evidence. <laughs> okay. <laughs> In retrospect, it's pretty obvious that they're not. Yes. We didn't know about the fused. We were like, we didn't what know could about they be? The yeah. It, it is funny, though, if you look at what Rolaine says at the end of uh, Words of Radiance, that he just basically says what the fused are. And we just oh, yeah, like, yeah. Don't, it, we don't understand what the hell he's talking about. 
Uh, no, but I, I was making a point like how Eshenai's mother is like, like uh, Eshenai goes and, and talks to her and they're like vaguely talking about forms of power and her mother is like, oh, you're gonna, uh, the, the unmade are gonna see you. And then I go, well, but almost the same conversation happens um, I think during the feast and, but then they talk about the gods and so I make a parallel, well, this person is concerned about the unmade and this person is concerned about the Prashendi gods and they seem to be concerned in about the same way. Therefore, they're the same thing. Um, but the thing I want to talk about, the thing I've been saving for last. <laughs> this is great. I love this. So this is 2013, October 18th, 2013. All right. This this is, if not my first, it is one of my first big theories. Okay. Pre-Words of Radiance, the fun time. This is pre-Words of Radiance, and then we got some readings, and then I revised some bits, um, and I don't know where that is. And then Oathbringer came, and I revised it again. And so I want to... So this is, this is the Fallen Heralds, is my theory. Ah, yes. Uh, and I am trying to figure out where the Heralds are, what they're doing, who they are, and so on. It is crazy that you're uh, doing this all pre-Words of Radiance. I will just put that out there. That's like... Because we really don't have a lot in, about heralds in <laughs> Way of Kings, let's be honest. Yeah, I don't um, even know if I was confident they were alive. <laughs> <laughs> we so I'm I am using like part bits of Lift's interlude and and Im's interlude. Sure, sure, sure. Um, that helps a lot. And so, uh, in in typical Argent fashion, I make a list, and I go, well, Nalan, and I go, well, not officially confirmed. This is probably who Nalan is. Uh, and then I kind of formed the basis of my theory around. Well, so the, the th my theory at, at the time was um, heralds are becoming these corrupted versions of their divine attributes. Yeah, yeah you've and talked so, about this before on the yeah. podcast. Yeah, yeah. And so I go, Nalan is just and confident, and we look at the man the darkness is, and he is in a way like he's all about justice and like he's, he's like super confident, <laughs> but also obviously he's twisting these things to be this murder machine. Right, right, right. right. And then I go, Shalash, here, she doesn't fit the, the theory quite as well, but her attributes kind of fit her, like, vandalism of yeah, her. Yeah, yeah. Um, Kalak, eh, whatever. Jezrian, eh, whatever. Um, <laughs> and then we get to Ishar. <laughs> and um, what here's what I say about Ishar. Okay, so this is, this, is a, this is a short paragraph. He's one of the shortest paragraphs. He's supposed to be pious and guiding. His body focus is flesh. <laughs> body focus. I was, I was really on the body focus. Yeah, I'm sure I you think, were. I think we'll find him involved with the oldest business in the world. The oldest profession. Though I don't know on which side. Probably a customer. <laughs> Indulgent, carefree, shameless sinner. <laughs> we are looking for a dirty old man here, folks. <laughs> you know, that still could be the case. He does run a giant cult. <laughs> Whatever is going on in he Tikar. Just, he just became a god instead of... <laughs> in, in his mind, at least. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, just, it's just a giant sex cult. Sex cult. Easy. I mean, we did get that in Oathbringer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. I was like, to our knowledge... Ishar wasn't there, but maybe it went south, just like right to two cars direct from Colonar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So what what advice do you guys have for for people doing the 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 in-depth world crafting <sighs> theory craft stuff? I, I do want to say character discussion is also a, an entire other aspect that we're we haven't really mm -hmm. talked about, and I think is also very important because we're talking about the the world building, and I think it's important that if you're into the world building, it's great for people to be in characters, which is why we're going to do more character podcasts. So don't you worry. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And that is a very valid theorizing way as well. But what 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 advice would you guys have for these sort of book discussions, these these in depth book discussion theories things? Um, I think to start, like, don't be afraid to be out there because sometimes you can be right but mm. when you are out there commit and like 
think about it um, because I know I have lots of times where I said something out there, like are the piercings there or are the miss metal or whatever. And then I, but I was just like, what about this? What about this? And then I kind of flitted away and didn't fully develop it. So kind of finding that balance between maybe going too into something and making it too complicated. It's a tough balance well, for sure. Well, also, you know, not just throwing out idea, like throwing a bunch of trash at the wall and seeing what sticks isn't good either. I'm just going to make a bunch know? of topics and just like take the one line. Yeah, thing. take, but take some risks. But when you do take risks, develop it and think it through, I think yeah. is. As, as, kind of, as kind of a corollary to that, I would say if you're like, if you're going to go out there, like expect people to be a little skeptical. That is kind of the, to the trait of us and in some cases unfortunately is that we are generally skeptical and it can be kind of hard to convince people and if you haven't acted their idea it may be that people don't think you're right and if you really believe in it that's fine and i think every one of us here has been had like an idea and people have been like oh i don't really think that and has been like proven right at a later date like that happens and so like even if you have a theory and you like believe in it like it's okay if nobody thinks that it's like that it's a hundred percent true you know just that's, that's the fun part. It's like we've all been wrong. We've all been right. You know, I, it's it's important to not be so attached to your idea that when someone says that it's wrong, that you're like personally attacked. And I think it's also important that when you're critiquing theories to not mm-hmm. make it a personal attack and say that graciously. And I can't say I've done that. Well, like just think it's like, well, uh, Ellen, obviously, you know said the, the mr water paper who's like all of that's true uh and, and that that's really hard to do but i think on, on both ends it's important to be like hey let's let's talk about the idea but like people don't need to like the idea but people shouldn't also be mean about it you know and mm-hmm. because again the crazy things could be right you know yeah yeah <laughs> from a from a more practical kind of perspective so these these are high level ideas yeah, that's of, true. of how mm-hmm. to approach things from a more practical perspective i would say the the art of theory crafting uh for me boils down to find one thing that you want to tackle okay if your theory like if you're trying to put together a theory of everything it is probably not going to to work um <laughs> I mean, not, we, not only, many have done that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and some of us have. It's like, one, it's obviously it's, it's extremely difficult to get everything right. Like you, you have to literally just pick Brandon's brain to do that. And two, it's much easier for people to latch onto the, the, like the, the bits they don't like about your idea. Yes. Mm, than it yeah. is for them to support the bits that they do. And so when you are in like 17 different places... Everyone is going to go, oh, well, that's overall seems fine, but I'm going to spend the next three pages talking about this one bit that I don't like. That's that's a big so, problem that I see a lot of just people not talking about the idea, but nitpicking minor details, Yeah, which is yeah. not I, the best. Yeah. And I think also being aware of what type of theorizer you are and then being consistent and while also recognizing that people might do things differently. You know, if you are a more like experimental theorizer, Except that, you know, there are some people who are going to not agree with you because they're more evidence focused. But then also, if that's your style, don't like insist on this really like stringent evidence focused Mm -hmm. critique of other people's experimental theory. Right. That's very true. Right. Yeah. Like. Yeah. People are going to work differently. Yeah. The other the other bit that I want to that I want to contribute is to me. A theory is only as useful as its predictive power. Mm-hmm. And so if you are um, if you are just saying a bunch of things and you are, well, saying a bunch of things, to me, that's not, I, I don't want to say that's not really a theory, but it's, it's not something that would catch my eye. Uh, what I look for in my theories and what I look for in theories of others is, here's some evidence, here's some, some observations that I've made about the book. Here is how I think this is going to apply to the future. Mm-hmm. Like here are um, so, answers example, to mysteries that we don't know the answer to and things like that. Yeah, yeah. So in my theory where I eventually ended up with, well, Ishar is a man prostitute. 
<laughs> you know, as you do. Uh, yeah, that's the, the thing that I was going for. I was saying, well, okay, okay, Nalan, we have so much information about him. He's the foundation of my theory. And then Shalash, we have less information, but she can kind of fit the mold. And then Jezrien eh, is kind of there. So now knowing all of these things, let's see how we can apply this to other heralds. And sometimes it works. Sometimes you end up with Ishar. <laughs> look, the, book t- <laughs> look, you're going to see book eight. It's just like sex god Ishar. It's like he's, I'm the god of sex. It's like, you don't know. You don't know. Well, it could be. While Rishar is burning. We're like, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. The, yeah. the, that's the, the bind, thing. binder of gods. Yeah, that's not all he binds. Oh. <laughs> I, like an interesting thing too, I think, is looking at remembering there are so many books left and also kind of thinking about the point. Like your theories, so for example, like the Well of Ascension, Heroes of Ages theories, when there's like one book left in that part of the series are going to be different than the post Way of Kings theories. And oh, yeah. re- just remembering like, how much there is left and so it's fine to theorize at that early point but just remembering you know this is a early information set stage so we're gonna be working off very little information yeah. and important and, fun. and, you know? and yeah. i guess, I guess th- yeah. this, this touches on, on something we talked about a little earlier i don't know if it was on on record or not but theories from like 2010 are going to be very different from theories in like 2020 right yeah Uh, We have so much more information about the Cosmere now, like the underlying principles of the Cosmere. So in 2010, a lot of theories had to like grasp at core fundamental elements of how the Cosmere and magic in the Cosmere work. But we didn't have names for these things, like Eric's principle of intent, for example. Yeah. Whereas now we have, we still don't have the full picture, but we know a lot more. We know things... Like, you know, the, the realmatic theory and color is important and connection. intention is important, connection, identity, things like that. And so grasp, like trying to reach for other terms and other fundamental principles that we don't yet know is less likely to be successful than it was a decade ago, just True. because there are fewer of these things left. Mm-hmm. True. I'd just say, you know, have fun. Don't try and, uh, it, we're, we're all just trying to have fun. There's no reason to be like, this person is wrong on the internet. I, as, as David said, right, he joined 17 Shard at last to tell someone that they, that, that theory was wrong, right? It's just important to realize that we all really like the books. We are mm-hmm. all in this together and in this discussing, and we don't need to win in a fight. Right, like there, there's no, there's no reason for that. Uh, I really encourage you to read Matt's uh, thing on debate etiquette. Uh, good for a lot of discussions on the internet. Uh, just talking and, about how to yeah. do things properly, and also that can apply to you know character theorizing Absolutely. or character analysis as well, right? And I think <laughs> it can be even more. Anything. You know, I think character analysis. I think it can be easier to become really personally invested yes, even than um, and yeah. there's more subjective elements there. I feel there. this is true about this character, so it is yeah. true. And like that's um, not wrong. So, like that's how you read the no. character, right? Yeah. Uh, like Eric read Zane as a complete waste of space. That, that is true. Yes. That, 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 that doesn't, yes, doesn't mean that doesn't well, mean that, you know, a Zane fan is is yeah, out Matt, to lunch. Get you out know? of here. You're banned. Get, get out of my here. Zane tattoo. <laughs> Get out of here. I'm going to break all my rules. It's not fun. I take it very personally, okay, that you like Zayn. Get out of here. It's fine. I don't care. Uh, this is because Matt and I, I guess we've n- known each other for nearly 12, actually over 12 years now. Yeah. When you th- when you think about it, that is really weird to think about, actually. Yeah. It's just yeah, 2008. It's uh, yeah, no, every, every now and then I go... Hey, these people I'm talking with right now, I will probably be talking with them about similar things for the next multiple decades of our lives. Think how good and our camera just... quality and stuff will be <laughs> 10 years from now on Shardcast. We'll have, well, 
I'll, I'll persuade all of you to get acoustic foam up everywhere. You'll all yeah. have studios. Yeah. And- Shardcast VR. Shardcast yeah. VR. Hollow. You'll you'll be like sitting next to us, punching us in the face when you don't hollow, like what we're hollow, saying. Hollow Shardcast. <laughs> hollow Dig VR. Hollow Dig yeah. Shard. Shard. We're just Dick. like, what is a hollow deck? <laughs> <laughs> Any other thoughts on just uh, theory theorizing advice? We totally didn't plan this, but it seemed relevant for what yeah. we we're doing. I would I would say that oftentimes simple is better, and and I guess this this kind of touches on the pick one thing and, and focus on it but like overly convoluted like sometimes sometimes the best theories are the ones that are just like hyper focused it, this, this so for example this is not even th- not even a theory but like if you remember the way of kings so we have the story of wonder sale where uh Derithil goes and finds these people the uvara and the uvara. uh the, yeah. the story the story ends or or one of the the morals of the story is that uh, the emperor of the Ovara uh, had been dead for a long time, and so Derithil climbs to like the tower where the emperor is and goes to the top of the tower and finds that person to be dead. And so here comes the realization that all of the crimes the Ovara had been doing had been their own fault, their own responsibility. And so the last chapter, I think, in the Way of Kings, or at least one of the later chapters, is the chapter where Dalinar realizes that honor is dead and the Almighty is dead. And all of the things that the Alethi and the, the and humanity has been doing, all of the crimes have been their responsibility. And the title of that chapter is In the Top Room. And it's, to me, it's such a powerful callback to the top of the tower with the Ovara and the Emperor. You know, somehow I've literally never noticed that. Maybe tons oh, of really? people didn't, but... No, I, I think... I, I I think this is this is Page Runner realizing this in like yeah. Oathbringer times. Yeah, yeah, by yeah. The way. yeah. Like, and yeah. it's it's such a small thing, but I remember it so well because it's like you can't even call it a theory. It's just hey, I noticed this cool thing, but and it it's is cool. so powerful to remember. Yeah. I, going off that man, chapter titles are so troll. Honor is dead. Chapter two of uh, <laughs> yeah. Way of Kings. <laughs> just like, and Calvin says it is just like is it. It's just really funny in retrospect. It's like, yeah, of course, honors that. That's chapter two's title. Context. Come on, <laughs> or like, I, yeah. I think I think it was in an annotation, but Brandon saying, "Oh, like the one of the big secrets of Mistborn is on the first page of the Final Empire." Yep, and we got on a lot of mileage arm. out of looking for that. <laughs> it's it is funny how some people notice the ah the. It's on his arms, not like in his yeah. arms. And some people notice yeah. that, and other people are like that's that's crazy. That's just a metaphor. That's just yeah. it's well, like no, no, no. That's very intentional. There was actually. discussion about Alendi um, is noted at one point to have a birthmark on his left arm, and so some people were like, "Oh, is the birthmark <laughs> what we were talking about?" But then yeah. people being like, "It's on his arms, plural." Not <laughs> you know, you know, you arm. know how he got that birthmark, Matt. How? Green's obsidian. <laughs> Green's obsidian. Yeah, <laughs> but one one plug I did want to put in, um, just for people who are interested in the Time Wasters Guide archive, is it's also really fun to go back and look at things Brandon has said because oh, he yeah. used to be more. Oh right, yeah. Um, Brandon used to be more active on the forums before he realized, I think, that we were retaining all his words and going over <laughs> them in with a fine tooth comb. E- yeah. Um, yeah. But I think, you know, there's some cool stuff if people are interested in going back. If you search Ewell, E-U-O-L, which was Brandon's username, uh, he says some cool things. Uh, you can see where he's getting cameos and a lot of like just forum users who were involved became like the names for the great houses. It was just a person named Techiel. Yeah, Techiel and Ilariel. I also came from the forums. Um and he also, you know, kind of talks about you see him backing away from the forums and saying, I don't want to be here. I don't want to interfere with this as much. Um, he discusses his first book deal, like before Elantris was published, which is kind of crazy. And so there's yeah. some cool, cool lore, old lore about about Brandon and his development as an author. So I encourage yeah. people to go and search that. Or even going back to that Hero of Ages Q and A, like if you want to see the fandom learn about the Cosmere, like that's where Brandon tells that's the fans that the Cosmere stuff. exists. That is yeah. a good thread, and like all yeah. the wobs are on Arcanum. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
But like, not every one of Brandon's posts is on Arcanum because it's like, yeah, he has 4,000 posts there. And like a lot of it's him just hanging out with friends. Like, I think there's times where he's like spitballing. It's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll we'll call Way of King series like Oath Shards or something, you know, and like things like that before he rewrote it and stuff. You you also have Uh, him like arguing with his brother or friends about like the X-Men movies and yeah. like what it's a definition there. of a hero is like it, it's, it's cool stuff. I remember he was uh, kind of shopping around the idea of what to call uh, the magics in, in Miss Born. So mm-hmm. yeah, he, he'd always been pretty set on allomancy, but originally the magic that we know as ferrochemy was going to be he- called he- something he- like hemallergy. Yeah. And he was like, shopping the idea of hemallergy or maybe like sanguimancy i want it to be yeah. something with blood but then there is this other magic system that is more blood focused yeah so maybe i should call it that <laughs> yeah but but yeah he was workshopping fair chemi and and some people i think on time wasters are like i don't really like the name fair chemi but it's like oh yeah. you know that's what we're going with get used to it yeah yeah, yeah. there's some some cool stuff. I hope that you found it very amusing to listen to us be completely wrong. Let's just have fun. We're just talking about Not completely. partially wrong, partially wrong. wrong, but it, it partially amusingly wrong. wrong. Like, and we'll we'll continue to do the same thing. Over look, and over I imagine and over, yeah. like after a while we'll do another one of these. It's like, hey, remember that crap that we said? Well, <laughs> that was real dumb, or or really on the ball, or half and half. So. Why don't we go to who's that Cosmere character? This character is from Roshar. Menace. Yeah. Tom. Raze. Void in drag on a horse. <laughs> it's time for who's that Cosmere character. Call. So you know the game. You send five clues and a character to WTCC at 17 shardcom We'll read the clues aloud, and these guys need to guess who's that Cosmere character. Uh, also, send in questions. We'll do a Q&A segment sometime when Base, Pat, and Grace are here. And yeah, I, I don't know. But look, we had to have really old-timey fans for this episode, so that's what we had to do. All right, so this one is sent by Nitpicking, uh, who does, Uh-oh. he says, say, edits the Copper Mind very rarely. Liked. Oh. Jess's uh, blood soul casting thing said that she got all the details right. It's good. Oh, good. A person of culture, indeed. Indeed. <laughs> you agree with us. That means we like you. <laughs> just, just kidding. It's <laughs> exactly how it works, actually. We're, we're, we're saying that jokingly. All right, clue one. This character is a scholar. Navani. No. Shashara. No. Ooh, like it. Yoshi of Thalena, Yasa's friend. And oh, Pen-Pen. nice, nice. No. Wow. Clue two. This character has daughters. Daughters. Tindwell. It is oh, Tindwell. Oh, nice. nice. Get uh, very nice. original Mistborn question. That was good. Yeah, when Matt's <laughs> on the show, you know, you know he's gonna get that arrow <laughs> one stuff. Uh so the other clues are this character dislikes predictions about the future. Ooh, that's a good clue. That would have been like a Richard misdirect. I nice. know. I yeah. should have put that there. Very nice. In a second. Very nice. Uh, yeah. Clue four. This character advises a king. And clue five. This character wears jewelry. Nice. Very good. good. Very yeah, nice. Some directions, some directions to Yasna there. Yeah, too, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. This next one is sent by Blue Tiger. Ooh. Clue one. This character is in line for the throne. Adolin. No. Kavid's colon. <laughs> Distantly. <laughs> no. It's, is that your guess? <laughs> He's dead. Uh, he was at one point in line for the throne, I assume. No, it's not my guess. Uh, okay, that's fine. I, I know that's a joke. Cut. <laughs> Kavid's uh, colon. If you don't look that one up on the copper mine. <laughs> Cousin Caves. <laughs> yep. <laughs> who, who, okay, so in line for a throne. Redden. It is not the Redden. Bastard. Ooh, that's good. Um, I'm going to go out of left field and say Serene. No, good, good, good. Clue two, which may or may not be helpful. 
This character is very religious. Foffin. It is Foffin. Yeah. Wow. Mm, nice. nice. Nicely done. Nice. Yeah, I, I, I figured one of you might get it on clue too. I was like, yeah. I was trying to, I was like religious. Rel- I'm like, okay, we got to skip to the planet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, clue three is this character is Nathian, so you'd probably get there pretty yeah. quick from there. Clue four, this character is very helpful. And clue five, this character has given their life to their religion. This yeah. is super ironic to me because when I heard Blue Tiger, I, I wanted to make I, I wanted to make <laughs> some Nathus color joke. I'm like, oh, like okay, Panther. I'm going to I'm going to think. Nalfian characters. You know, yeah. I wanted to make a joke, but, but then I'm like, oh crap, it's Fafin. So I really should not say anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Fafin is one of Vivenna and Ciri's uh, siblings. Is the Idrian monk. She's oh, yeah. the monk one, yeah. Yep. And initially third in line behind um, their brother. Ridger. And Ridger. Yeah. And Vivenna. Or not Vivenna. Was- Vivenna's not in line. Because she was, right? Yeah, yeah. Because right. she was in t- always intended to marry the god king right, at right, the right. beginning. Yep. So it's always yeah. going to be Ridger. Yeah. So that got to get that Ridger and Fafin lore in, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the unpopular siblings. <laughs> I I hit the random page of the copper mine the other day, and it sent me to Ridger. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. always go to Ridger when I hit random. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> it's, it's a crack in the universe. I mean, he's on a ridge. What does what he want to... Of course he's on a crack in, of the universe. It makes sense. Indeed. Yeah. So, I hope you enjoyed this episode. I have no idea what you'll think of this, but uh, I, we had a lot of fun laughing at, at our ridiculousness. Uh, we will have a Google Doc down below, which probably means we should actually edit this, and so this is actually viewable for normal humans, uh, rather than our quick copy-pasta action <laughs> here. But we hope you enjoyed. Uh, you can follow us on 17 for all the book discussion you want. Be nice. We're all having fun together. Uh, you can join Discord for the same thing, but, you know, faster. Uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, YouTube. You can uh, find us on iTunes. You can support us on Patreon. And we'll see you next time. You know, we should probably do something character soon because it's, it's kind of been mm-hmm. a bit. So we'll, we'll yeah. need to do something like that soon. So we'll see you all sure. next time. Peace. Cheerio. Check out the TWG archive. <laughs> That'll be in the Google Doc.